Good morning. My microphone is not wanting to stay up. Doesn't help that I have this ball mounted computer that's kind of getting in the way now. Here, I think that's right. Uh, anyway, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday morning. We are here to play Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'm so glad to have you with me today. Um, now, there is construction going on at a neighboring property, and it's really loud, but I also need my window open to smoke so that I don't smoke out my house. So uh, if it gets too noisy, just let me know in chat and I can close the window, but I think it'll be okay. This microphone really likes to only pick up what's directly in front of it, so. Uh, good to see all of the members in, and regulars in the chat today. Random Dude, Brett Buss, Melina Richards, Slatty Bardfast, 200 Angel, Nicole Young, Vladimir, Von der Bergen, Brian Jickschwarm, Mirella Miwi, uh, Don Quentin, Jay-Z, and Hunter. So good to see each and every one of you today. Hope you had a fun time last night. I sure did. Alien Isolation is just a great game. How did this escape my notice back when it was published? Not only is it gorgeous, not only is the set design amazing and the attention to detail fantastic, but it's truly a frightening game. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm dying a lot and having uh, severe moments of anxiety and fright. Uh, but uh, I'm so grateful that you're all there to join me for my gameplay of that particular game. But we are back here on Red Dead Redemption 2 now. And I believe that we had finished all of the side quests in and around St. Denis. And we could now tackle one of the main quests, I think. I forgot where I was, but we'll, we'll see when we get inside. Okay, I've got my coffee, I've got my cigar. I'm feeling good. Josh Bunton says also, part two to that episode I sent you, the link to showed up in my feed. Great, I, I mean, I, I, I say this sarcastically, I love watching old um, episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings. It's always wonderful to watch yourself 10 years ago, trying to do what you do now. It's just, uh, <laughs> watching, watching a 10 year, year older version of yourself or a 10 year younger version of yourself um trying to chat and perform or whatever uh really kind of hits home how much you change without realizing it and i'll i'll watch an old episode of myself in scotch and smoke rings and i'll have just behaviors and um you know i'll use turns of phrase or whatever that I'll just go, ooh, no, I wouldn't use that. Ooh, no, I wouldn't say that. Ooh, why did he do that? <laughs> but you, especially when you're a streamer and you, you, you're you online and you've got a public presence, you, you go back and you rewatch yourself, and when something like that happens, you make a mental note. Oh, I should probably change that the next time I go live. In 10 years of doing that, and you your personality changes, <laughs> you just become a different kind of person. So watching a 10-year younger version of yourself is really weird. It's really weird. So thank you for that, Josh. <laughs> All right, uh, hold on a second. Uh, Kiyagu san says, Yo, Oxhorn just took a midterm. Wish me luck, lol. Good luck, my friend. Midterms are a bear. But I hope that yours goes okay. Oh, the coffee. Good morning. Oh. Okay there. I remember we had just gone to that cabin with all of that, um, all those Easter eggs for Red Dead Redemption 1, I believe it was, right? And now my horse's head is in a tree. Uh, Jiggle says, I'll avoid Algernon Wasp collecting side quests. Otherwise, you'll be streaming until 2021. 
I think I've already done all of his side quests. Uh, he, there are quite a few of them, but I think I've actually already done them. Okay, let's get out of this swamp. Yep. Let's find a road. Oh, it looks like we're on the road. That is the road. Climb a tree, horse. That's a good horse. Okay, um... Okay, there. First things first. Let's eat. Gotta keep Arthur healthy. Can of beans. Mm, so good. Let's feed our horse. Bale of hay. You alright, boy. Let's brush the horse. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> okay, we've taken care of the horse. Now, let's take a look at what we are here to do. We can remove the marker. I don't need that anymore. Uh, okay, so we've got a bounty poster, a poster that's in Rhodes. We've got Brother Dorkins. Oh, he's got another quest for us. Leopold Strauss and the Professor. That's right, we were going up here to do the Professor's thing. But, um, Brother Dorkin has something for us already. Bobby says, Ox, will you be doing a lore series on, wa on Wasteland? Um, I, pro I don't know. Probably not. It's, it is intriguing to me. It, it really is. I would love to dive in and kind of find out more about the whole Wasteland universe and how it compares to the Fallout universe. After all, the original Wasteland was the predecessor, spiritually, to the Fallout universe. So it would be really interesting to see what that's like. But um, I don't have any plans yet. I'm just so busy with other games. A random dude says, hey, Ox, you explore the town in the very east, uh, uh, east of the map. You explore the town in the very east of your map. Yes, I do. I do explore that town. Are you saying there's another town I should explore? Okay, um, I'm sure the brother quest will pop back up if I somehow lose it. We're on a quest for the professor. Remember, he wants us to get him some booze or something. So let's go north and see if we can find some... Some moonshine. Moonshine for the professor. I hate that. Every time I load a save, it wants to reset my auto save. Oh my god! What happened to you? What happened? Well, I mean, I... If I lose him, if I loot him, I'll lose honor, won't I? Well, there's his horse. Well, maybe there's like a special item on his body. Predator bait. Oh, and that explains how he died. He was hunting large predators. He got bitten by maybe a Komodo dragon or something and got poisoned. Look at that huge hole in his chest. Oh my gosh. What about his horse? Was his horse rare or something? Bane and Dedu says, I've seen other channels with uh, several tiers in their joint channel mem membership, ranging from $2.99 up to $49.99. The perks get better with each rank. Any plans on something like that? I don't have that ability right now. Um, so no, that may, that may be a YouTube promotional feature. How big were those channels? 
Were they like millions of subscribers? I don't have access to anything like that. Stop by Osman Grove near Emerald Ranch, says HTC. Uh, I think I will be swinging that way. Emerald Ranch? No, that's way out here. Osman Grove. Well, next time we're up there, remind me and I'll do my best. Oh, sorry, guy. Akina Tana says, Streaming you while I do things around the house makes me feel less lonely. Thank you for your shared time. Yellow House near Van Horn Trading Post. Yellow House near Van Horn Trading Post. Yellow House near Van Horn Trading Post. Where is the Van Horn Trading Post again? Well, I'll check it out if I get there. Random Dude says, I mean you should explore the upper east of your map because there's a random town there. Ah. Alright, I'll have to check it out. Weird Beard says, I was thinking about that a couple of days ago. Maybe offering a unique t-shirt to certain level of members or something. Yeah, I, well, when they open up that opportunity for my channel, I'll, um, I'll try to take advantage of it. At the moment, there's only one membership option for my channel, and I... I, I, I don't have the ability to give different tiers of members different things. Hold on a minute. Hey, what is this? There. Did we just stumble upon a ghost town? Oh, no. This is... No, no we're not there yet. Pleasance. I'm tempted to explore it. Pleasance, 1883. Well, what happened in Pleasance? Welcome new members, Jiggle84 and Grapple201. Where's the graveyard? Whoa, whoa. Here's that empty town I found. Now, why did Arthur Morgan decide to draw a picture of the town? Slow it up. The Dark Seraph says, Good yes, presumable boy. a plague of some sort wiped it out. Well, let's find out what happened to the town of Pleasance. I know it's a sidetrack. Uh, I, I know it's sidetracking us, but it's interesting to me. Killed by knife wound. September 1883. Had his life taken. Killed by knife wound. Murdered. Killed by gunshot. Killed by gunshot. Murdered. Found murdered. Died of gunshot to the head. Killed by gunshot. So someone wiped out and... Stay out plague! Oh, you were right! And of course I'm running right for it! Ah! <laughs> what? But is it really a plague? Or is it someone's cover? For like a, a bootlegging operation or something. All right, I'll check out the, the plague-ridden shack in just a minute. I want to check out these other ruins.
Blacked out windows boarded up from the inside. Can't get inside. There's a barn out over there. Let's check out the barn in just a second. First, let's check out this homestead. Ah, ill with sin. Sinners. Unclean sinners, ill with sin. So these poor people got hit with a plague and someone is saying they deserved it for being sinful or something like that. All right, nothing there. Well, let's check out I guess we go to the plague barn. Stay out, plague. Well, what the deal? Hey, cigarette card. Well, I was really interested by uh, the story of Pleasant, Pleasant's here, but there appears to be nothing here. Uh, there, are, there are some ruins across the way. Now, this house got burned down. Burned to a crisp. Nothing but bottles left. And then what do we got over here? It's Arthur! No? Okay. What a cool little weapon. I can't loot any of that, really. So a schoolhouse, is that what this was? Hey, another cigarette card. Jolly Jack cigarettes, fountain pen. Kristen Smith says, hey Ox, I raised my cup of joe to ya. Have you been able to see the aliens on Red Dead yet? Um, what? <laughs> no, no, I, I really have not seen aliens on Red Dead yet. Um, that will be something, that'll be an interesting something to explain. When we get there. What's this? Otis Miller and the boy from New York. Hey. Okay. What have we here? Number 69 in a series of original tales of Otis Miller's adventures. Oh, I love these. Then when he had first arrived in New York City, his nose bristled at the foreign sights and smells, and he had a thirst a mile long. Otis sat on his horse. He looked on at the wagons and refuge, uh, and refuge, and the cacophony of city noises and shoeless children running 
uh, shoeless children running and workmen heading home and women carrying bags of groceries and shouts and sounds that drowned his ears. That was one run-on sentence. Holy cow. The red reflection of the sunlight cut between the buildings and seemed to sever them in two like a curtain of some boudoir. He got down from his horse and walked it to the outside of a bar and tied it up on the cobblestone street. When he walked inside, all eyes and ears turned as everyone looked in his getup. We had one of those moments already. He had left his gang holed up outside of the city. None had been this far toward civilization, and he feared one of them would get drunk or into trouble and disclose the whereabouts of the rest of his gang, who currently sat on a considerable, uh, considerable amount of money. Uh, then we've got some sort of glitch here. Something, having per uh, perpetrated a bold hold up against that evil scoundrel on the Lenatchee train. They had been overrun by detectives outside of Blackwater and had fled north and east as manhunters posed in various guises, scouring the countryside as everything from lightning rod salesmen to itinerant, uh, itinerant peddlers of farming implements in their desperate search for Otis and his gang of kindly outlaws and the sizable bounty on their heads were their heads were worth what blackwater whiskey neat with water back he sat to the barkeep the barkeep eyed him suspiciously you wandering off some farm i reckon i may be dead he put a dollar down on the bar and looked at, uh, looked the barkeep in the eye a voice behind him hollered out don't get much of your lot here in New York City. No, I reckon maybe you don't, he said, turning his head to the side to see a pack and bush revolver pointed dead in his face. The patrons looked on with breathless interest and waited for the outcome. Otis sneered. He had not even taken the trouble to turn around. He looked at the bartender. Let me have another. Yes, sir. And one for my friend here. I ain't your friend. There ain't got a, a gonna be no shooting in this bar unless I do it. And presently, you aren't worth the price of a bullet to kill ya. Before the man could blink, Otis took a shot of whiskey and whipped around. Something grabbing the man's gun and pointing it in his face. You're gonna have to be quicker on the draw. A baby could get the drop on you. What you plan on doing? You gonna shoot me, farm boy? Every detective from here to Chicago will be after you. They already are. Otis sneered and looked the city boy up and down. The bar patrons gazed at one another in silence. Then Otis noticed the man's other hand held a second revolver that had been tucked in the back of his britches. I reckon you ain't the greenhorn I thought you to be. Never thought I'd meet up with the famous Otis Miller in New York City. Otis smiled and handed him his revolver. You city boys have a queer way of greeting strangers. I'm looking for a Tucker Van Pelt. With the gas lamp gang, you found him. The kindly bandit pulled out a handsome gold watch, no doubt the memento of a daredevil raid. He studied the numbers. I reckon you're late. They walked outside and passed a group of women, painted and powdered, who whispered and snickered as they walked, uh, went past. I hear you're interested in pulling a job at the Bank of New York. It's run by nasty folk who exploit the poor. You're going to need a team of horses to get all that gold out of there. That's a good thing, then. What's that? I know just the place to get me such a team. And there it ends. Chitinator says, Ox, what kind of scotch do you recommend? Uh, Lafroig Glenfiddich Lagavulin are all good scotches. Uh, Black Jack says, Hey, Ox, have you encountered Jackson Cornwallis yet? He has downed you if he has. Or has he downed you, if you have? Also, when is the Scorch Beast origin video coming? I mean, we learned the origins of the Scorch Beast through the primary plot of the game. And we kind of hinted at it when I did my video on the story of the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, but I haven't thought about making a Scorch Beast video yet. Um, Jackson Cornwallis, the name rings a bell, but I don't know. I don't know when we've last seen him. Jack has asked for a Penny Dreadful book. Oh, Jack. Well, now we have something to get him when we find him. Or to give him when we find him. But what was all that about Blackwater? In the Penny Dreadful.
Whoa! Look at all these crazy beverages. And I can't loot any of them. Huh. I guess that's it. Well, we got a penny dreadful for Jack. Vladimir says, did you play Wasteland 2? It's like a two it's like two classic fallouts. And you control a whole party, not just one character. I thoroughly enjoy it. I have not played it yet, but uh, it sounds interesting. Brian Fargo, right? Yeah, it sounds like something I'd be interested in pursuing. Okay, well, that was a nice little detour. Let's go get our horse and continue on our way. Ethan H. says, Oxen saving children, not a good track record. Look, the only child that I got killed in a video game was a robot child. And that doesn't count, right? It only counts if it's a real human child. That's what I'm telling myself. So we're going to save young Jack. Oh, yes. Is it possible to not save him? I don't think I could handle it if I don't save Jack. If, if for some reason we don't save Jack, I'm going to have to reload a save or something. Because I don't think I can handle it. Not at this point. Not after losing Alice or whatever her name was. <laughs> In Detroit become human. Kristen Smith says there's a bit of a ritual to see the aliens, but the cabin you see them in is by the lake in New Hanover between the N and the O on the map. New Hanover? North of Emerald Station. Why are so many people sending me to the outskirts of Emerald Ranch? Okay. Yeah. Worth a look. We remember that place. Okay, we're finally here. Now, where's this shine? Easy. Random dude says, I wish I could live in your country so I could watch this at 10 a.m. and not 2 a.m. I wish that too. Who we got here? Can we do this with dialogue? Oh shit. You ain't kidding me. Ah! Um no, we can't <laughs> That didn't work too well. <laughs> they just plowed right over me. Okay, fine. Ah. Where's this shine?
I thought I had an I would I would have an option to dialogue with them to say stop I'm ripping you off. But no, it looks like I got to kill them all. Oxhorn, Master Bandit, says Brett Buss. Well, I try. Warren Lancaster. Interesting that I'm not losing honor by killing these guys. I can kill and rob these guys, but any old corpse that falls off a horse in the middle of the road and I lose honor. That was pretty smooth, Oxhorn, says Ethan. Well, I'll, I'll uh, thank Rockstar's cinematic mode for that. They, uh... After the four shots, they did a nice cinematic uh, slow motion pan to Arthur Morgan in the derby hat just going. All right. One up. That's shot, all right. Let's get you home. It's okay, Inky. You follow behind. Yep. Now, what am I? How are how are my cores? How do I see what my cores are at? Oh, there's a compass. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know there was a compass. Um, I probably need to, and there we go. So let's do something to fortify my cores here. Oh, that's, that's not gonna help fortifying my core. I need some booze. Booze will help. Booze or a cigar. No, I don't want to waste my fine brandy. I could, I could I could waste my open gin. That helps a little bit. Yeah, let's do the open gin. Four people dead over a wagon of booze. Such a waste. They really should have given me an option to dialogue them down or something. All right, you slow poke. Out of the way. Bob says, watch for the headless horseman in the swamp. Oh, great. <coughs> Pardon me. 
Was the headless horseman? What town is this? It's like a fishing village. Oh no, we're on the outskirts of St. Denis already. So we just went down, uh, down the coast here. Okay, we're almost there. Oh, uh, looks like brother what's-his-name is closed up shop. We're going from murdering people to steal their booze to helping out uh, the friar and his orphans and, and the, uh, <laughs> the homeless immigrants. Brett Bus says, those outlaw moonshiners, the killing is justified. How dare they untaxable alcohol? So, I got your moonshine. You're a wonderful man. Wonderful. <laughs> you got my money? It's, it's for a very good cause. Uh, my name is Professor Andrew Bell III. Perhaps you've heard of me. <laughs> Can't say that I have. Oh, I'm an inventor. Uh, maybe you've read about me. Uh, uh, I don't read much. Oh, oh, well, that's too bad. Oh, yes. <laughs> you got my money? <clears throat> oh, well, it is the most wonderful invention, friend. Oh, you, sir, have done a great All deed. All I've done is get some creep a lot of drink. <laughs> Creepers, excellent no, nonsense. Now, you've helped me develop the most humane machine imaginable, a way to induce calmness to our most troubled souls, a way to end the barbarity of a public hanging. Oh, so, so humane. What are you talking about? The electric chair. Well, what? See, it's a chair full of electricity, and quite fascinating. It calmly and peacefully dispatches the sinners uh, to face judgment. Wow. Yes, judgment. Yeah. Where is it? Well, uh, it's in my laboratory. The next thing I need is a, a demonstration, a public one. Oh, uh, no. Uh, do you know the police chief? Hmm? As well as anyone. Oh, wonderful. Perhaps you can encourage him to let me demonstrate the chair. It will help bring this town into the next century. Yes, could, could you do that? Hmm? Where's my money? Am I going to get paid first? Speak to the police chief at St. Denis Jail. Or St. Denis Jail. Uh, did I do that one okay? No, that's, there's no medal for that one. Just Chris with a tip. Thank you very much, Just Chris. Excellent, excellent. Oh, this wonderful methanol. Bane says yes. Oh, don't worry about me. Speak to the chief and I'll, I'll have that chair ready. Public shocking now. Oh, oh man. Well, let's find this police chief. Let's see. What's this? Uh, brother. Oh, it's the brother. Charles Chatonet. Professor, what's this Charles Chatternay thing? Is that a new one? <clears throat> Let's do that. Uh, I've seen Brother twice. Brother Dorkins. So we know it pops up. Char Charles Chatternay. Why does that name ring a bell? Let's go see what he wants. Man, I'm going to spend... I'm just... It's going to be St. Denis for the next 20 weeks. <laughs> I'm just going to have all sorts of stuff to do in this town. Well, there was the brother teaching street kids how to read. There is hope for humanity. Oh. What's this? On the other side of the street here? What? Got a problem, buddy? Saloons overrun with rats. 
I'm losing business left and right. I need to get someone to get rid of them for me. I'll pay very well. I just need it done. All right, calm down. Let me see what I can do. Oh, thank God. Just be sure not to bang around the place too much. I'll wait out here. Looks like we're exterminating rats. <laughs> Let's make sure our horse is hitched. Can we not hitch to one of these poles? Guess not. Uh, kiago son says, Past my midterm, Ox, microeconomics is brutal, lol. Well, congratulations. And then random dude says, People in 1899 predicted creepers. And you won't get paid. And you should explore the Upper East of Town if you haven't found... And then he didn't say. Yeah, I'm starting to think I might not get paid for the electric chair thing. I saw you, you sneaky rodent. I saw him go. Dead eye and all these doggone rats. All right, now he wants me not to shoot up the place, so I got to be very careful. Yes, kill those bastards. I like how he's cheering me on from just outside. Yeah. Hey, cigarette card. Yeah. Hot air balloon. Would you like to fly in my beautiful balloon? Oh, look, we've even got little rat paws on the ground on the little mini map. Where I've killed all these rats. Jim Bob says you should use small game arrows on the rats. Collect 12 and you get a hat. I really don't want to pick up these brown rats. Collect 12 rats? Is that it? Well, how do we know that this... Is that it? All the rats are dead? Alright, well, I'll just leave them in here for him to clean up. Ah! There we go. A rat hat says Jack. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, no thanks. I'm good. I don't need a rat hat. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, thanks, mister. Take this. Ooh, you earned every cent. I killed worse. All right, 14 bucks and a bit of honor. Now that's a good day's work. God, guess I got some cleaning to do. What's my horse doing walking around here?
Where's that coming from? I don't want to miss it. Howdy, partner. All right, let's, uh, it's going to be down here. Hello, gentlemen. Come on out. You Hello, tired? sir. We going to talk about what you've done to my wife. You're a dead man. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. So much for the new world. Hey! Who the devil are you? Far as you're concerned, I am the devil. Now get out of here. This cat! I said get out of here! Yeah. I'm going. Oh, Charles! I don't quite know why I did that. Because barbarity is boring, no? It kept me amused some years. You must go, my friend, before the Jean de Marie arrive. Hey, you gonna do right by this feller's wife? You have done right by her. The little bird is free. Mm. I am an artist, cowboy. I must do what I feel. Look, I have an exhibit at the gallery. You come, see what I mean. Oh, Charles, our misguided Frenchman. <laughs> why did we... Uh, I, I, I agree with Arthur. He's like, why did I do that? We kind of chased off the, the vengeful husband. And uh, let the philanderer go. All right, Charles, you do what you got to do. Can we get in here? No. Nope. No, nope, we can't. All right, let's go see if brother, what's his name? Brother Davin is still there. Yep. And he is. Well, well, it's on our map. Let's go do it. I kind of wish you let him get shot, says Deuteronomus. I know, I kind of feel the same way. But I also want to follow the quest to the end. Hey, mister. If we let him get shot, that's it. No more uh, strange French guy in Saint Denis. Oh. What? I drink from the maiden, and I live again in the dead. The heart of the ring of blood. We found another one! I drink from the maiden, and I live again in the dead. The heart of the ring of blood. I drink again from the maiden. I drink from the maiden. Is there a fountain? With a female statue that we can drink from? Hey, partner. Did he poison a fountain? Is that how he's collecting his new victims? Well, let's keep our eyes open for a fountain. I think that's our best clue so far. Try it here. Please. Please. It is... M... Por favor. It's warm. W. An upside-down M. I, I don't get it. Oh, you will. It's like swimming. It takes time. But then it's easy. And the whole world opens to you. I hate this. It's too hard. Take your time. I lick. I lick. Like. I like the soon. Sooner. God damn it. What does that even mean? Watch your language, please. 
Summer. Summer. I like the summer. Don't worry. You know the letters, you know the sounds. You're nearly there. I got no use for stupid books. I don't have any use for stupid books. If you ain't, why are you making us do it? No, you should say, I don't have any, not, I got no. <laughs> I think you may be confusing things a little now, Brother Dorkins. <laughs> Go over it Morning. first in your... Sister, my friend, Mr. Morgan. Oh, sir. Brother Dorkings told me about the wonderful thing you did. Oh, he talks a lot of nonsense. No offense. None taken. None taken at all. Hey, stop! He's kids that'll work! Don't hurt him, please! Oh, he just no. Do I really gotta chase down another kid? Find the kid and recover the crucifix. Find clues to where the kid has gone. I hated this last time I had to do it. Hey there, mister. Hello over there. Look out now. You all right? Oh, I'll live. Kid did this? Hey, you know him? He robbed me. Which way you go? Uh, that way, I think. Thank you. Get off me! Where's my watch, you little weasel? I don't know nothing about no damn watch. Last Saturday, I saw you steal it with my own two eyes. Hey, you. Why don't you leave the boy alone? What's it to do with you? I'm sure you got things to do. I can hit a lot harder than you. I promise you that. All right, forget it. Little shit ain't even worth my time. Thanks, mister. Did you drop the crucifix? He did! He dropped it! Oh. <clears throat> hey, you want some company, mister? No. You sure? Hey. What? I don't know you. This is Downs? Oh, no. Not you. Get away. Huh? Now! I mean, I, hey, help! Uh, help! Hold on! This man is bothering now. me! Someone help me! Officer, help! <sighs> Downs. Morning, sir. Where do we know that person? Morning to you. Find Sister Calderon without alerting the law. Um, was she the wife of that, uh, was she the wife of that guy? who we lent money to and then we had to go wrestle, wrestle some money out of him again. Um, all right, we need to get back here and we got the law on our tail. Brett bus says it's the lady whose husband died before he could pay his debt. Oh my God. We just met her and she's a prostitute in St. Denis now. What about her son? 
because we met we met her son earlier. Oh my god. You sure you're normal? My horse is coming. Eventually. Where is he? Okay, he's still coming around the corner. Oh, and now he's going back the other way. My horse is stupid. Wait, there he is. Good boy. Did I call you stupid, Inky? I didn't mean it. You're smart. You're Time smart. To go, boy. Okay, but we got law on our tail here. Hey, we'll risk it. If she is off prostituting herself, where's her son? Bonjour. Why are you messing with me today? It's a new challenge, Father. When I was younger, those challenges used to frustrate me. But then, over time, I learned to ask how instead of why. Often, the people that are most in need of our help are the most resistant to it. Mr. Morgan! Excuse me, Father. Sister, I got your cross. <gasps> you didn't! Oh, I did. Oh, I hope the boy... He's fine, physically. Mentally, he's a piece of work, but who am I to say? Brother Dorkins was right about you. You are the most wonderful man. Brother Dorkins is... <clears throat> Greatly deceived, I'm afraid, but I'm happy to help a little. Thank you. You see, it's a thing, but my mother gave it to me when I was a novice. Shortly before she passed, you are the most wonderful man. Oh, excuse me, Father. Sister, enjoy your day. See, Father? Oh, sure. Send me right towards the cop. The no, thanks. Found him. Bronze! I told you. Why bronze? Oh, Why not gold? Was fantastic. Find the kid within 19 seconds. Giving me these arbitrary time limits. Well, I'm sure you have more important matters to attend Am to I than still my wanted? Own I am still wanted. Great, now I gotta go pay off a bounty. Do I really gotta go pay off a bounty now? Post office. Gun it. Oh, we're not that far. Okay, we're not that far. Hurry. We have to go pay off our bounty because our One next quest are... with the professor is to go to the chief of police <laughs> and get us uh, convince him to start using the electric chair. Joseph. The Jade Dragon Peking Restaurant. Ooh. Sounds delicious. Officer. Now why isn't he coming after me? Oh. 
Have they all given up on me now? I mean, there is a red border all the way around Lemoyne. Well, let's go pay off our bounty. Are you going to play the Wastelander update? Absolutely. I'm really excited about it. Can't wait. Welcome back. No Good to see you again. Glad to see you on the up and up. Lemoyne, five bucks. It hasn't gotten too bad. I never did anything wrong, but I got falsely accused, you know. I mean, that is legitimately what happened. Thanks, partner. Uh, J Dog Homie says there's a stranger mission at the big pond you missed. Big pond? Oh, I haven't even gotten to that side of town yet. Uh, well, we're heading that way towards uh, for the professor, so I'll stop by the big pond. A stranger mission? What's a stranger mission? Well, let's, let's swing by the big pond because we got to check out the professor anyway. Ooh, look at that, the stables. Should we see what horses they have in stock? Should I buy a new horse? I mean, I'm gonna, I would miss Inky. I've kind of, even though he's a, a digital horse, he's not real. He's a figment of my imagination. I've kind of grown attached to the old guy. I'm going to be, I'm going to miss him if I upgrade. Uh, to, to a new horse. Uh, maybe we should see what they got in stock. Let's go to the stables first. Easy now. Good boy. You need a transport, sir? Hold on a second. Sorry, my brother's texting me. Morning. Uh, what, where was I? Pyroman says, next serial killer clues. One is next to the butcher and the second behind the gunsmith. Butcher and the gunsmith? Gunsmith and butcher. Oh, right over here. All right, I'll keep an eye out for them as well. You can spare for a blind man. Oh, oh, is someone there? I remember what you guys told me last time. Alms for the blind. Seems pretty. <clears throat> seems pretty blind to me. That gun should stay holstered around here, friend. All right. I'll give him money. I don't oh. think he's making it up. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, truly, thank you. It means a lot to me. Someone there? 
you have anything to spare for a blind man? This one is real, lol, says Pyro Man. Won't anyone watch him help a poor blind man? I'm blind. I, I think I think this one's actually blind. Gambit says the Arabian will get you around a lot faster. All right. Um, I'll see if I can find an Arabian. Caitlin says the ox caught you on my lunch breaks. All break. Always excited. Well, uh, have a happy lunch break. I hope we get into some adventures during your lunch break. Let's go to the stable. Let's check out some of those new horses. Random dude says, you haven't even seen the new camp yet, Ox. I know, I've been having too much fun at Saint Denis. Uh, we still haven't even gotten to the pond. So many, oh, what's that? All right. We can, we can do the horses later. We've got a stranger here. Uh, we'll try the stables after the stranger. Shut up. Sorry, <clears throat> got another text. All right. Sorry, I'm making weekend plans with the family. Why do I waste my time? Why? Well, well, what have we here? You okay, buddy? Uh, fantastic. You Americans are nothing but shysters and traitors and slippery tongue bull suckers. I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> Here, help me please. Back to work with a bloody smile. <laughs> no problem, Marco. You are the great genius, so we shall the hot poker up the ice. Say thank you, Marco. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What are you? Some kind of. European toy maker? No, I am a fucking genius with poker up the ass, like I say. What accent is that? Hello. Do I look like I should entertain children? Ukrainian? No. Russian? No, he says. No. <laughs> I am the savior of the mankind, buddy. Yes, you meet him. Professor Marco Dragic. <laughs> they won the silver tongue American betrayal. And not paid the money to. Yes, he told to shit, man. So, uh, what's this toy about? It is not a toy, Big Nuts. It is demonstration of my genius. Of my ideas about the source of life. Oh, it's a toy boat. Yes, it is a toy <laughs> boat that I can power remotely using electricity in ways you cannot see. Good for you. <laughs> Ways I cannot see. And still the investors will not come. Just a couple of old ladies and a more... Polish! He's Polish, says Ethan H. <laughs> ladies! <laughs> Gentlemen! <laughs> Enchanté! <laughs> Hello! Hello, sir! <laughs> okay. Uh, how is the piles? Yeah? Good, good. Yeah. Okay. My friends, 
You are about to witness history. How are the piles? <laughs> a demonstration <laughs> of my infinite insight. All of us, we feel old. You, you are old. Oh. But maybe I can make you immortal. <laughs> Using waves, you cannot see. Roman says Dragic. He's Serbian or Croatian, I think. Fraud. And this buffoon, dressed up like a buffoon, is a stooley. I watched them conspire, you morons. I never met this buffoon before two minutes ago. Isn't that right? Which part of it? Oh. So, Professor, show us your magical toy boat. Only this time, let the buffoon control it. Check if there's any funny business. Oh, oh. this ain't nothing to do with me. Come, please, please. Uh, it is easy. Any moron could do it, and I am about to prove that. Here, take this, and this, and uh, don't touch that. Use these ones to steer, and uh, this one to shoot torpedoes, okay? Yes, now, now blow up the little battleships, and, and avoid the sea mines. They have magnets attached. Make a nasty explosion if they touch the bot. Okay! If this silly dimwit can use torpedoes on boat to destroy the battleships, imagine what technology can do in the hands of certified genius! And I have certificate. Hey! It's doing what I'm telling it! Of course it is doing! Ah. Now, to do closer to battleship and shoot with torpedo! You avoid the mines, yes? That is what controls are for. I got one, see? Yes. Oh, the mines are coming up. for me! You see what he does? No wire like telegraph, no pulley system underwater, only waves in the air. This is remarkable. Think of those poor boys on the HL Hunley. Eight of them perished to a mere five on the Housatonic. And what a way to go. Trapped in a box at the bottom of the bay. I suppose you intend to make an unmanned killing machine? You misunderstand. This is the secret to life, not death. The transmigration of the soul. I make lifeless metal breathe like man. Well, I'm not sure about that. Another one down. I'm getting the mastery of this. Show them one more to prove. I'm gone for you. <laughs> yes, you see what he does? Now, bring the boat back to the dock. That sure was something, but I'm not sure what, if anything, was proven here. <laughs> Let me just... That was over. great. <laughs> this is really remarkable. This is just a, a demonstration of my prowess, sir. <laughs> the real miracles require investment. <laughs> ah. Now, the dimwit will use invisible waves to destroy the little sailing boats before they get to other side of Pong. Am I the dimwit, they say? <clears throat> Random dude says, do you plan to sell that fur or what? Yeah, you're right. I, I collected that fur in my last stream. Haven't bothered to sell it yet. Vladimir says, I think it's a reference to Serbian slash Croatian Nikola Tesla and one of his inventions, a remote controlled boat. I got the same vibe. A palm bomb says, I asked you for advice the other day and I think it helped. Thank you very much. Also, where's my Fallout lore at? Ever, uh, ever think of doing the non-canon Fallout games? Um, maybe, maybe I'll do some um, Fallout tactics and uh, I publish Fallout videos every weekend. So still lots of lore to go. J.A. Bristol with a tip says afternoon ox. I just noticed something you might want to fix. The schedule sticky in your channel background still says lore videos four days a week. Does it really? All right. Well, I will have to change that. Still avoiding magnetic mines. No, oh, he'll attempt to at least. Shush. You're not here for this smart talk. The steam train, the telegraph machine, the motor car. They will all seem pedestrian in comparison to this technology. We are not reliant on wires or coal or gasoline. No, 
just rays in the air, like the voice of God. And funding from us? And funding from you, of course, but what a thing to fund! What an opportunity! So he's trying to get funding no from these guys. stupid enough to pass this up. Not even Dimwit here. Hey, do you really They can know stop calling me Dimwit at people. any time. Ah, Americans! All you think about is sales! Oh! It's on the other side. Okay. Look who rules the seas. Very good. Very good. And I didn't even now get hit. The boat back here. I really want to see Fallout Tactics, says Parker <laughs> Smith. <laughs> and then, as I say, <laughs> any fool, huh? Thank you, thank you. What is that? <laughs> it is the stuff of life, sir. <laughs> it's incredible. No, no, no. Incredible things are in my lab back at Dover Hill. <laughs> that will astound all of you. <laughs> Mr. Marcel, can I count on your support? Well, this is expensive. <laughs> it is immortality, sir. It is, it is very cheap. Perhaps over lunch. Maybe. I'm gonna go. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and thank you. Um, if you're ever up near Dover Hill, pay me a visit. There, I will really amaze you. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and I hope you will forgive my uh, European coarseness. In the Balkans, uh, we are a mannerless people, but we were. The Balkans! <laughs> now, let me go over the investment with you once more. And, and, and this is for military purposes? No. It is for humanity itself. <laughs> the Balkans. Okay, let's get to my my horse here. Uh, so the next time I'm in Do uh, at Dover Hill, sounds good. <clears throat> okay. Now what were we gonna do? We wanted to go see the professor here, but I passed up the stables. Let's go back to the stables there and uh, see what horses they've got. Because I'm still using the first horse I got at the very beginning of the game. Good old Inky here. Ah, sorry. Move. Lose your saddle, it'll be retrieved for you retrieved for you when entering the stables. Hey, whoa, whoa! When's the last time you fed your nag? Got some stable space for rent if you're interested. <clears throat> Buy horses. <clears throat> no coda. Oh, these are expensive horses. Turco man and Arabian. Type superior. Speed and acceleration handling elite. Type race, so a racehorse, breed Nakoda, reverse dapple Rowan. Torn Takora says, how much completion do you intend to do for this game, Ox? Just story and non-collectible side quests? Just curious now uh, to know, considering I'm thinking of redoing my own story mode because of you, friend. <clears throat> well, thanks. Uh, I plan on doing the story, definitely, and most of the side quests, as many as I can get. I don't think I'll do a 100% completionist playthrough. I'm not going to collect every cigarette card, for example. But I'm going to try and get most of it done. All right, Akina says you can get a free Arabian in the west near Lake Isabella.
In Collectico says Arabian is fast and agile. Get the Turkoman or the Arab or Arabian. This is a race and war horse. Look at that. <clears throat> the health of the horse is higher, but the stamina of this one is higher. Catch a wild Arabian, says Paulus. Hmm. Well, well, well. Yeah. Ray bloody purchase. Well, well, well. Uh, I don't really want to have to go catch a, a, a free horse. Ethan says Ox is not going to catch that Arabian in the wild. That's too hard for him. Oh! Suddenly, I've got a challenge here. Now, now I didn't want to go do it just because I'm lazy. Now, Ethan says, I can't do it because he's just too fast for me. <laughs> Ethan H. says Arabians are not good horses. We've got conflicting opinions in the chat here. I get the Arabian. Don't get the Arabian. Get the free one. Don't get the free one. Thomas says the Turk is one of the best. The wild Arabian horse is too skittish. The Turk only, says James. The Arabian is too skittish. All right. To be honest, all horses scare easily. Well, the Turk looks like it has better stats. The handling for the Arabian is elite. Whereas the handling for the Turk is standard. Handling for Nakoda is race. I don't even know what that means. <clears throat> J-Dog says Turkoman is braver than the Arabian, but Inky is pretty well-rounded too, Oxhorn. Kiagusan says it's the best ho horse in the game, lol. Like, what, what's the best horse in the game? The Turk or the Arabian? Get the Turk, says Defaulty Clan. The Arabian is too jumpy. Get the Turk. Buy them both, says Brett. Ah. Arabian horses are babies that will abandon you. Turk is a speedy war horse. Arabians are skittish. I like the way the Turk looks, so I'm going to get the Turk. Oh, what should I name him? All right, we've got Inky the Black Horse. We'll name this guy. Uh, he's, he's got a, a sort of golden mane, I guess. So, Goldie? Uh... Gold, I like Goldie. Do you like Goldie? He kind of looks like Straw, but we can't call him Straw-y. Straw-ish? I'll call him Goldie. Or Goldish. <laughs> nugget? Because he's kind of like a gold nugget. Tony J says, Ox, you're so shallow. How is it shallow to buy a horse because it looks good? That's a <laughs> is that, that makes me shallow? I like the color of this horse, and now I'm shallow. Turkey. Name it Turkey, says Shelly. Blinky, Gold Nugget, Inky and Stinky, huh? Blinky. Blinky's kind of knife. Inky and Blinky? I, I do like Blinky. What a waste of money. Oh, my God, says Slipknot. Uh... I like Goldie. All right, I got a brand new horse. And I've got no, the Tennessee Walker, the, the Shire. The things they do to their horses, Inky. it ain't right. So, for all that money, I didn't get I didn't get much. My Goldie Hor er, Goldie Inky. They're pretty much the same. Okay. No, they're not. Goldie has more health. Inky has greater stamina. But that might just be because I've ridden Inky a lot. 
Huh. Inky has greater maximum speed. Let's upgrade. Find anyone better with horses than me. That's saddles. A Choose your you saddle. Want a saddle that fits for you and the horse. Is this all just cosmetic? Let's find a nice looking saddle. Ooh, Lumi McClellan saddle that looks nice. Nice and worn. Gurdon Va Vaquero. Uh, looks comfy, cozy. Oh, that looks nice. Stinger roping. Tell you what, that one looks cozy. You see any of the chickens yet? Every morning I wake up to those damn birds clucking away. I like the default skin on that. Oh, that's a bit bright. Yeah, that's nice. There we go. That's a good choice. High quality. Improved. <clears throat> Parker says, well, now you're going to need to get max bond, and that means lower calling distance for whistling until then. Well, I'll work on it. What do I get for the improved saddle? Does it just look different? Info. Oh, core drain rate. Yep, yep, I'll get that. You're gonna feel the difference. Trust me. Hello, mister. Okay. So we got saddles. Let's take a look at saddle bags. That's the same one I used too. Now this is just vanity, right? doesn't actually do anything, so I'm not going to worry about it. Right? Am I wrong? Or does it actually increase my inventory space? Stirrups. Oh, yeah. That's a smart choice for your saddle. Oh, these actually imp uh, have an impact on speed and acceleration. Drain rate. Oh. So I want something with a low drain rate. Oh, wait, I don't understand this. I don't want the drain rate to be high, right? You know, I've lived here my whole life. Seen this place go through hell and back, and I wouldn't change a thing. Up 50%. Bigger bags, Ox. Upgraded saddlebags allow you to carry more outfits on your horse, says Dark Dragon Grove. I see. Uh, well, drain rate 50%, I mean, from a stat perspective, this is clearly the best. Even though it's expensive, we'll go ahead and day. get it. Thought it would fit under a shirt, the idiot. Uh, horns? Saddle yeah. horns. What do yeah, these do? These well are all... These don't have an effect, do they? Nothing on tab. So that's just vanity. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, let's try Blankets. Nope. I can't tell you how many times I use that one. Cosmetic only, right? Bed rolls. Also just That's cosmetic. The same one I use too. So then I guess the one thing I need is a saddle bag. Let's do the upgraded saddle bag. And then let's choose a color. Ah, oh, there we go. It's well worth it. Weathered price. hickory. Equipment appearance. Oh, look at this. We can give our horse a haircut. This horse will Natural, when I'm regular, through. short, long, braided, mohawk. Whoa. Dreadlock. Ugh. Let's do regular, short, and long. Natural, regular. What's the difference between natural and regular? I can choose the color. I can dye his mane. <laughs> I can dye my horse's mane. What? 
I think I'll, I'll skip bred, out of this handled, one. Cared for, and trained more horses than anyone uh, else Well, let's take a look at the tail. You Natural. Regular. Oh, you're the type who likes to stand out, huh? <clears throat> Short, long, braid, dreadlock. Ooh, that dreadlock. Um, do people who own horses braid tails? Wow, he's really getting frisky with that braided tail. So, I, I think I would want High to braid the tail from you won't go a wrong. practical point of view, just because if this, if this horse is just crapping all over the place, a big sort of stringy tail like this is going to get nasty real quick. If you braid it, you got this one big plank to um, to clean, and that's it. So for hygienic reasons, we'll braid the tail. Oh, appreciate it. Services. Horse care package. Fully restores all cores and yields gold cores. We can rename the horse. Well, since this is a brand new horse, I think I'm good. Tack and services, equipment. I'm thinking of putting signs oh, we did up that already. Shop along those bumpy roads just down the way. And I think that's that it. Bring in some business. Horse provisions. We should probably restock on stuff. Nice. All right, done. Get up. All right, we're stocked on everything. Level one on horse bonding. That's it, girl. Turkomans are multi-class with characteristics of both race and war horses. They can be identified by their slender but agile build and also their sleek coat. The dark bay gold and silver coats can be purchased from a stable. They handle well but can often be impatient. They are popular due to their fantastic health, good stamina, and fast speed. This well-rounded horse is great for most situations. Well, I think we made a wise decision. Anthony says, hey, Ox, big fan. Love the work you put into your videos, especially the voice, the voiceovers, the VA. Never had patience for RPGs, but you've shown me how fun they can be. Thank you. You're welcome, Anthony. Thank you for watching. Sorry, one second. Right. Now, we need to go to the professor. Or we need to go to the um, chief of police. That's a nice hunk of horse meat. St. Denis Police, get permission to demonstrate the electric chair. All right, can I not hitch my horse here? That's a horse hitching post. Okay, girl. Crash! Ah, watch yourself. Saludos. There we go. I have to turn away from the hitching post to hitch it.
All right, got to get that bonding in. So welcome to our humble police house. I really hate being cooped up. Remind me when I joined the social. Group. I can't possibly help you if you don't tell me what you need. <clears throat> Chief, I'm representing the inventor of a humane execution machine, an electric chair, and he uh he wants to demonstrate his invention here. Ah, I'm familiar with the man and his work. Tell you what, I'll give you a permit. But it's going to cost you $100 in fees. All right. OK. Well, the price is fair. Here you go. And here, sir, is your permit. A pen and unusual formalities, of course, such as uh, finding a suitable candidate for humane dispatchment. I'll tell that to the professor. Good luck. All right, now we got to head back to the professor and uh, get a humane candidate. Up. Theater's got a show on. My favorite thing. Let's go see what's playing. Look out. I'm sorry. Watch yourself, partner. Hey there. Looking for some entertainment? Can I buy a ticket, please? Head straight through those double doors. All right, so shall we heckle them again like we did last time? All right, I'm ready. What have we got today? Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Greetings. Thank you for your obeisance. Truly, I am Aldridge T. Abington. Tasked you no with bringing you the greatest show in Saint Denis, or for that matter, the whole world. I have the foresight Ooh. and fortitude to bring you acts that, when exhibited together, comprise the most amusing oh, actors, no. captivating performers, and feats of amazement for your emotional, spiritual, and psychological enhancement. Do something better! My delight in acquisitiveness began Arthur, calm down. Age. When I was the proprietor of a tiny dog circus, it's all nonsense. which tragically perished in a a tavern fire. Yes, thank you. Oh, my little babies. But well, that's another story. Let us prepare now for a phenomenal. Did he tell us a story about how his dogs died in a tavern fire? From my time in France, you I stink. met these lovely girls who would dance and expose their bloobers for a piece of molasses candy. Oh, what a delight. I bring you the girls of Petite Flaneur. Expose their Gabriel. bloobers? What's a bloober? And how do you expose it? I'm instantly terrified. Get off the stage. So those are bloobers. Okay. Rockland says, can't lie, we'll miss all this come April 7th. Oh, those bloopers! Oh, it's so scandalous. Oh, these raunchy westerns. Go back to France, hairy lady. <laughs> Oh, 
Go back to France, hairy ladies, he says. Bloomer! Oh, they're bloomers! Show I see. Bloomer equals underwear. Thank you, Shelly Siren. Get them girls off the stage! Slanty Bartfest says, I can see their ankles! Outrageous! Ladies off the stage. This dancing is terrible. Yeah. Oh, they didn't make a mistake. Go away. I was really hoping Arthur would have unnerved them. Give us a refund. <laughs> All right, what's next? Another death-defying feat? Majestic! Have you ever seen such a thing? No. I'm all a quiver, I can tell you. <laughs> I bring you the most incredible singer of serpents this Trash. side of the swamp. Oh, that's pretty good alliteration there. From La Grasse. Pretty good alliteration speaking there. Speaking in that battered tongue, but bringing us a show unlike we need another any act. other. The mysterious... Bye. Whoops. Arthur is so not bemused. She's good with that. Women shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Less snakes, more dancing girls. <laughs> he doesn't like the snake. Get off. Now their legs, says Adam. I know she's wearing pants. This is outrageous. You belong in the kitchen. Oh, Arthur. <laughs> He's so awful. No. He's so awful. <laughs> uh, bite her and get it over with. Bite her and get it over with, he says. Arthur, I think that's a constrictor. I don't know if biting would be the way that this would go down. Garbage! I see his mistress. Get out of here! So, is the snake gonna like choke her to death because we've been unnerving her so much? Worst show ever! <laughs> Snake into boots. Turn that snake into boots, he says. Phony. That snake loves you. Get him home, he's a mess. You stink. People in Yeah, honey, kiss that just bad already. It's that dumb bit her. Is she gonna live? Oh my goodness. I I I 
show you. She's fine. She has lain with snakes for many moons, yeah. much like the president. <laughs> While traveling in the hills of Bavaria, my olfactories were disturbed by a monstrous manure cart no in front time. of me. <laughs> I was surprised to find it wasn't pulled by a beast of burden, but instead Go by a away. mighty woman as strong as an ox. I present to you the great Hortensia. Hortensia? Yeah. So now we're gonna meet an ox woman? We met the snake woman, now the ox woman? him with the big block of stone. It's bloody terrible. Well, the crowd is really un not pleased with this show. Dear Lord, she's Nobody fine, cares. ladies and gentlemen. She has a very strong constitution. Uh, I once saw her stop a charging bull with her chest. Yes, an odd mating ritual, Give us but a refund. each to his own. It has been my pleasure entertaining you this evening. Each day is one less until our last. Distraction is our greatest joy. Good night. Trash. Until next time. Ah, oh, all right, that's it. That's the show. I like how there's completely new acts. And we've messed it up big time. Every single act except the first one failed because of Arthur and his shenanigans. <laughs> Turn the snake into boots. Right. <clears throat> now, where's my horse? Oh, what are you doing? so sorry. sorry about that. Stay back. Come on, lady. Can't you take a joke? Darn it. I'm sorry, lady! Move it now. Excuse me, partner. Mister. Hi there. Bonjour. Okay, no one's coming for me. Poor Arthur. I'm sorry, lady. Oh, God. Now I've heard we've got to start work even earlier. Oh, yeah, I heard that already. Now, uh, what are we doing? I even forget. We saw the play. We got a horse. We did the, the pond. We um, went there. And now we need to go back to the professor. Because we got permission for the electric chair. That's right. 
Ox, next show, going drunk, says Josh. Can you do that? Deuteron- <laughs> Deuteronomist says, I'm sorry, lady. Law sounded almost like Jerry Lewis. I'm sorry, lady. Yeah. That was pretty great. <laughs> I didn't mean to knock him o- knock her over. Ox, recharge your dead eye now, says David Norrell. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Let's get some booze. Does that mean something is, is about to happen? Use some of that open gin to fortify my core. And then let's smoke a nice cigar. Where are all of my cigars at? Am I out of cigars? Cigarettes. Oh, I'm out. <sighs> That'll refill it, but it's only temporary. Right? I have seven. I'll try it. Bonjour, monsieur. Sounds is spitting out some fears today, huh? At the beggar? Good morning, sir. He decided to walk off. I missed it. All right. Oh, because it started raining. Hey, hey, move. See, Charles Chatterney again. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we're already here. Let's check in with him. Okay. All right, Charles, what do you got for me? Oh, it's his gallery. No, no, Ox, don't go to Charles yet, says Akina. Brett Buss says, Ox, please read, don't show his painting on stream. Why, why, why not go to Charles yet? Do the Charles mission, says Ethan. Okay. Well, I won't show his paintings on stream because uh, I have a feeling they'll be of the adult nature. Um. Enjoy the show, if that's possible. It's a free show, so don't come asking for a refund. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to narrate this as great as I can. Sooner you go in there, sooner you can come out. We're walking through a big double door. I just don't like how much time you're spending with the man is all. Just wait until you see his work. It's very progressive. Take a well, cigar. I'm not so very sure how I feel about progression. Paintings or otherwise. Come on. 
You won't have seen the like of it before. I promise. Maybe that's a good thing. Hold, hold on. Let me compose myself. I take it she's one of the models? Sean Fornango says, there's a vampire in the city, Ox. Thank you, Sean. We'll miss the party. All right, I'm getting lots of uh, nudity warnings from the chat. <clears throat> uh, so, up, thank you? you very much. I'm walking through an archway. Arthur is moving into a big room with blue carpet and blue painted walls. There are posters on all of the walls, none of which are nudes. So I think that it's Greek. Oh, we're restocking on brandy. Man, I'm glad I'm doing this just for all the free cigars and booze. Or could be Roman. Hey, wait, these are some of the pictures that I've taken, aren't they? Okay, we've got a nude statue. That's not really scandalous. You know, it's Italian, most likely. No, wait, these are the photographs taken by, what's his name? Our friend. And a few paintings. Algernon. Those are the photographs taken by Algernon. Over in Blackwater. <laughs> yeah, there's Arthur Morgan. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next room. Oh, wow. We've got That's quite... Far too modern for my tastes. Mr. Chardonnay, he's just a terror. It's making me... The man crazy. simply can't paint. Oh! <laughs> okay, I'll show you some of these. All right, so that one, that's too topless. Uh, that one, well, too topless with a bunch of grapes. That one, well, you see a butt. All right, this one, I can show you this one. That one's not so bad. You see a bit of cleavage. All right, uh, what else can I show you? Uh, that one's just, I have to show it. How did he paint that? That's a self-portrait, isn't it? <laughs> and then the one on the left, we've got, look at these idiots. Excuse me, Mr. Chatonet. Could Ladies you paint some drawers on her? Madame, I paint her in her natural state, as she was and will be in paradise. There's nothing natural about that. Clothes are civilization, repression, death. To be naked is to be free, innocent, alive. Like Buddha said, you know, we are all just here to fuck. <gasps> Well, that explains the decadence of those Hottentots. Hey, you got a picture of my wife here in her delicate. <gasps> Henry, oh. is that your behind? Oh, why would you be showing it to that man? That's my mama. <gasps> as nude as the day she was born. Stop looking at my husband's buttocks. <laughs> Stop looking at my mama. Well, maybe <laughs> she shouldn't expose herself like that. This is disgusting. A nerve on you. That's it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> place for us. Come here, hey. They're all yeah. fighting over it. Filthy little man. Oh. Oh. Come on, horse. We are leaving. Hey, I'm coming after you. Arthur's Bridget. laughing. Hey. All right. Oh. Uh. Uh. Waste of my time. Sorry, it's a big, it's a, it's a fight. And I'm surrounded by nude paintings, so I can't show you any of it. Hey, get back here. That's a solid right left. Oh, ooh, knocked me down. Oh, knocked me down. Stay down. Who's talking now, huh? Hey, where you going off to, Frenchman? Where is the French? <laughs> That's my husband's buttocks. Stop looking at my mama. That's awful. Oh, pick up my hat. He knocked my hat off. I gotta find Charles. All right, I'm walking out of the nude painting room here. is well and truly over. Let's get out of here. All right, the fight. I mean, there's bodies on the floor. We, we knocked a few people out. Let's go see how Charles is. Any more free cigars and booze? For the F-bomb ox. Thank you, Chininator. No more free cigars and booze? I think I'm all stocked up on cigars now. Poor Charles is fleeing. Hey, we got cigarettes. Ooh, I'm going to smoke some cigarettes so that I can get the pack. 
Well, uh, hopefully the YouTube censors are going to be okay with that one man butt that I showed. It was just too funny. I, it was, I'm sorry, I had to do it for the comedy. The man butt was too funny. I couldn't not show it. All right. Gems of Beauty card set. Sweet. And look at all those cigars. Oh man, now I know where to go. If I ever run low, I'll just come here. Oh, Charles. He's hiding back. No, that's someone else. Charles is downstairs. You okay, Charles? We Americans, you know, we're prudish when it comes to things like that. This way, this way, come on. I think we're okay. Huh? The exhibition, what can you say? It was not boring. Huh? It was not boring. Uh, it was not. to test people, push them. I thought I was a fraud, a no-talent brush washer. Now I'm not sure. We provoke emotions, no? You keep provoking emotions like that, and all your canvases left punch holes through. I told you I was a whole ass. <laughs> you did, and you are. <laughs> now maybe go be an asshole somewhere else for a while. Where's he going? Where are you going, Charles? Here we are. I know a lady over here. She may let me stay for a while. Good luck. That picture I gave you, it will be worth something someday. I can feel it. Perhaps. Right now, it seems like the only thing it'll get me is kicking the balls. Oh, you are funny, you know. I hope to see you again sometime. My angel, my little bird, it's me. <laughs> Is this the affair, lady? <clears throat> Mission complete. The artist's way three. All right. How did I do on that one? I didn't get any gold medal or anything like... Oh! They <laughs> Even in the thumbnail for this quest, they show the man butt. Chaternay unveils his latest work at the Gallery of St. Denis. Saint Denis. Von Rex says your reaction is priceless. Also loving the Far Harbor series. Thank you, my friend. Oh, well, we got through it, and hopefully the YouTube monetization gods shall not be offended. Let's get our horse. Hey there. All right, girl. Easy, girl. I guess I can't do it here in the alleyway. Uh, now, let's go back to the professor. That's where we're headed next. around here getting real worried about all the robberies. Good morning, sir. Hello, sir. Tony J says, word of the day, the man butt. All right, let's hitch on up here. Can we hitch our horse? No. Let's see what the professor wants. Oh, I can't go in there. Ah, hello, friend. Hello, professor, professor. Andrew Bell the third. That's it. So. The chief says you can test out your machine, oh. pending the usual formalities. And what are they? Uh, finding a suitable, uh, subject. Ah, funny you should mention. This fella here, he seems sturdy enough, and he's guilty as sin. Ooh. Wilson J. McDaniels. Wanted for murder, bigamy, and immoral animal husbandry. What's that? The mind shudders. <laughs> 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 Find him for me and help me put him out of his misery. Okay, wow. 
a murderer, a bigamist, and an immoral animal husband wrist. Last sighting close to the Grizzlies border, north of the tracks above Heartland Overflow. All reward well, claims to be filed and will be paid out in full by B. Lambert Saint Denis Police Station. I mean, he does kind of look like one. I have he? only a few more adjustments to make. Uh, please hurry with our subject. Science awaits him. All right. <clears throat> We got to catch ourselves a bigamist. Never shall a man have been so humanely dispatched as this poor wretch McDaniels. Please, I I don't know though if this is a humane dispatch 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 dispatchation. Dispatchation. Do we really want an Im an immoral animal husbander to be leaving this mortal coil so peacefully? Oh, way up here. Well, this is taking me north of Emerald uh, Emerald Ranch, you guys were saying there's something up here. Tell you what, that is so far north, I'd better take the stage, coach. <clears throat> um, but it appears to be locked. Why is it locked? It's the middle of the day. Hey, let's go sell that pelt to the trapper. And then let's see if the stagecoach is open. Then we can take it up to Emerald Ranch and uh, go find ourselves an outlaw. Ethan says, Ox, please read. Will you do a lore series on Nuka World after Far Harbor? My friend, I have already done a lore series on Nuka World. Complete with a musical animated video intro, like all of my uh, Fallout series. So it's already done. You can enjoy it now. Right? Good news from Oxhorn. <laughs> Osmond Grove, if you head north. Oh, wait, I'm here. Where? That's right. You got a problem? Me too. Doggone it. I always dismount before hitching my horse. Hitch the horse. Hitch the horse. Hitch it. I want to hitch the horse. Hitch it. Only because you're on your horse, it shows the stagecoach unavailable. Dismount and you can use it. All right. Let's go sell our pelt. Morning, my hey, hey, there's a fountain. With a woman. But we can't drink from it. So maybe he was being literal by talking about drinking from a lady. Oh, what do you have for me? Okay, let's take a look at it. A two-star pelt. Good deer pelt. We'll sell that. I hope you make good use of that. I need my gun oil. I need my predator bait. Mature venison meat. I should probably cook that up. I need to find a campfire somewhere so I can cook up my venison meat. Random dude says the stagecoach is always open. Also, you should discover the town in the upper east of your map. Thank you. Pyro Man says you don't have right. to hitch the horse, I know, but every time I do, I increase my affinity with the horse. And especially with a new horse like this one, I want to increase that infinity uh, in an expedited manner. So, stagecoach.
fine horse, he says. I'm starting to get compliments on my horse here. Okay. I'll drive you wherever you need to go. Thank you. Let me get off and hitch my horse. Hey, move it. Trying to hitch my horse. I heard the mayor's going to be getting paid almost. Whatever. All right, take me to Emerald Ranch. Welcome new member Megan M. Oh, my horse got all caught up. Okay, now, we need to head over here. Somebody said there was something between the N and the O in New Hanover, and I don't remember what they said was there. Something about a cabin. And then, I forget what else was said. Let's, I'm, I'm guessing between the N and the O, that must be this lake. Let's head there, see what's here. Nope, that's not what I, yeah, there we go. And then we'll head to this waypoint to get the criminal. Knock! Yeah! What was that? Easy now. Horse got spooked by something over there. By sheep? Why are you getting all spooked now? Go to the lake, says Pink Heart. Okay, I'll go to the link, to the lake. Here we are. Easy, easy. All right, small lake, small cabin between the N and the O in New Hanover, exactly where you told me it would be. Now, look at this. This is the quest we are on. Look at all of those enemies. Are we going to mess up the quest we are on by taking a pit stop here? Snake, feed horse. Right, 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 right. Let's feed the horse. Here's some beets. Uh, here we go. <laughs> and then let's brush the horse. And then let's feed Arthur. Oh, man. So much to do. Um, have some... Oh, salted beef. Yes. I mean, he doesn't need it. Look at that. His cores are completely full. Let's try something that doesn't... Yeah, popcorn. There we go. Let's go to popcorn. Candies. How would you describe slash recommend Red Dead, says Anthony? I, it's... It's a masterpiece. The only way I can describe this game is that it's an absolute masterpiece. Once you get through the graphical glitches that I suffered with for the first few episodes, it's so beautiful. Everything is... Oh, is that... Is that one of those things? No, that's a human skull. It's not one of those, um... Dream catchers. I thought it was a dream catcher. Can I hitch my horse here? No, that's a human skull. What? What?
what have you guys gotten me into here? Check underneath the broken wagon. All right. Ah, oh, I can't take it. Open chewing tobacco. Lucas says, sleep at a campfire, then return at night. Really? Ugh. All right, can I explore during the day first, and then I'll come back at night? <clears throat> Tilly says, Ox, my pit boy just arrived via mail. Your bookcase has been bad for my wallet, but good for my collection. Self-carrying it up. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to inspire. Opened snake oil. Opened cocaine gum. Holy cow. It's worth it, says Brett Boss. Okay, all right, I'll do it. All right, due to the clamor of the crowd, I'm going to go make a campfire, wait till night, and come back, all right? Now, can I pitch a tent here? Let's cook. Since we've got a campfire, might as well cook up some plain venison. Oh. Stow it. Cook another. Stow it. Cook another. Stow it. Back. Coffee. Yeah, brew some coffee. Why not? Let's pour. Drink. All right. Um, leave. Sleep till night. Tear down camp. Where's the little... Moved me. Oh, that's annoying. Michael says, Howdy Ox, really enjoying your alien isolation playthrough. Come on, my girl. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, everybody. I'm coming back at night. Let's see what's in this cabin at night. Okay, then. And I can hitch a horse here. Hitch a horse. Nope. Hitch a horse. Nope. Oh my gosh. Hitch a horse. Fine, I'm not going to hitch my horse. Hey, you're right. There is something under the cart. Take Guara rum. Man, everything that I'm finding, I've already got. Volatile dynamite pamphlet. Nice. <clears throat> Volatile dynamite. A few years ago, a nasty camping accident resulted in the discovery of a spectacular new version of dynamite. <clears throat> Horace T. Hotchkiss was prospecting for gold mines out west, and the contents of his knapsack became covered in animal fat from a broken container. The next day, he carried on blasting open a tunnel into a mine when the dynamite coated in animal fat created a remarkable explosion. He lost most of his hearing, but discovered a remarkable new explosive. The Frontiersman's Requirements Dynamite and Animal Fat High-Velocity Cartridge from a Pistol or Repeater or Revolver or Rifle how to prepare, take portions of animal fat A and a high-velocity cartridge B and carefully insert it into the end of a stick of dynamite C. Carefully store in a satchel. Camping tip, wash your clothes at least once a month. For soap, combine wood ash with animal fat over flame. And a billfold. You're kidding me. It didn't abduct me. But now we, uh, now I guess we understand what happened to all these poor people. It's Mothership Zeta, says Deuteronomus. I was getting Mothership Zeta vibes, that's for sure. Oh, it's regular cigarettes. Well, you're right. I'm glad I came back at night. Who is that guy? Hey, cigarette card. 
Dr. Hawthorns. Potent Miracle Tonic. Heaven's Gate says Sagacity. <laughs> Getting Heaven's Gate vibes. Search drawer. There's a journal here, but I can't read it. Oh, hello, High Priest. What is your sermon today? Josh says, lol, Ox, you found Paulson's cabin or the cowboy from Mothership Zeta. It's all beginning to make sense. This is where Paulson came from. <laughs> Letter. Mysterious sermon at the second hour under the half moon by the great love and grace of our savior, Kukowaba. Kukowaba. Voyager of time and galaxies, we cast off our corporeal shells so his vessel can take our spirits to the promised realm to live in peace and power until the 2000th year when we will return for the new chosen and worship once again at the peak of Mount Shan. In his love, we rejoice always. Oh, oh my. Anything on the back? No. Well, well, well. Oop! Searching that chimney. Hey, aged pirate rum. Well, there we go. I think we've exhausted the secrets in this uh, cabin of death. My, oh my. And dawn breaks. Well, so uh, I guess aliens are canonical in Red Dead Redemption in this universe. Who would have thought? Check Mount Shan now. Is there a real Mount Shan? Another UFO sighting on top of Mount Shan? Henny's Bethel. Where's Mount Sean? The Three Sisters. Heartland Oil Fields. Moonstone Pond. The Three Sisters. Fort Wallace. Rock. Well, I don't know where M Mount Sean is, if it's, a real mount if, if it's a real mountain. But we'll have to keep our eyes open. I mean, this looks like it might be a peak. Is that, is that Mount Sean? At any rate, we need to go here to kill the outlaw. Right. Back to Goldie. Let's go, girl. Left top of the map, says Pyro Man. Mount Hagen. Cairn Lake. Cairn Lodge. Poulter. Alder Ranch. Not seeing anything about a Mont Mount Sean. I probably have to travel up there to discover it. Because I'm not seeing it here. Right. Um... I have a feeling I'm going to be getting into a firefight soon, so let's make sure everything is fortified, and it does look fortified. Let's grab a gun.
What way is... Oh, it's wanting me to go up this road. I mean, I'm right there. I don't need to go that way. Oh, look, some horses. Wild horses. Mount Sean is, is it. It's at Big Valley. You just passed through it. North of Strawberry. Big Valley. Mount Sean. You're right. Uh, <laughs> I don't, do we have time for that this stream? I don't know. We've got about an hour and a half left. Well, we found it. Clean your gun, Zox. Okay. Weapon needs cleaning. Let's do this. Locate McDaniels. Easy, whoa. There he is. Let's go from the high ground if we can. Think we could get up there? No, that's too steep. So we're gonna have to go around. Yep. I just was trying to run down to my horse. I was gonna chase after him. What the heck? 
Ah, uh, you lost McDaniel's. Come on. Special treat for you. Born free. I was born free, goddamn you. <gasps> We're going for a walk. Guess they wanted me to capture him on foot. When I raced back to my horse, they uh they failed the mission for me. That was frustrating. Well, at least we got him. I wonder if I can still loot the bodies. Okay. See, I don't see any X's on my mini-map now. I lost the ability to loot the bodies of the men I killed. Well, let's at least loot the camp. Get some coffee. Oh, no, they're not going to let me drink the coffee. Uh, can't open the, the stow box either. Nothing of value here. Well, bummer. Come on, girl. Take me to damn cork, then. Oh, wow. Can I take a, a caravan with a body that I'm towing? This ain't America. We ain't free no more. Can't raise no animals, take no wives. All I did was graze my livestock. Married them that needed marrying and killed any that tried to stop it. I ain't wrong. It's you that's wrong. We was trying to live free. And you came along and laid waste. Take me in. Just take me to the jailhouse. I didn't hit him because I want to hear you this know, guy try to defend himself. You ain't going to court. You ain't going to jail either. I'm taking you to a professor I know. What in hell are you talking about? You're a lucky man, mister. You get to be part of a great experiment. Shut up. Huh? You ain't gonna die needlessly, is what I mean. Nope. Your death's gonna be an uh, important step in the advancement of human knowledge. What in hell are you saying, mister? This professor, Andrew Bell III, I believe he said. He's a little odd, maybe harebrained, but I got no reason to doubt the quality of his work. What's this damn professor got to do with anything? Well, he wants to try this. New electricity chair on you to kill you humanely. <clears throat> this is gonna no. be awful. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's gonna strap you into this contraption and run a large electric current through your system. Got something to do with moonshine. I don't quite know what. <laughs> I guess that's why he's a professor and I'm the bounty catcher. <laughs> well, as I said, I can pass on his assurances that this is a most humane way to go. <laughs> It'll be just like. Well, like switching off a light. <laughs> they wouldn't let you do this to me. They wouldn't. Oh, they would. And we got a permit and everything. You was in the animal husbandry, am I right? Well, 
You ever seen lightning strike livestock, Mr. McDaniels? <laughs> I ain't ever seen the actual impact, but I came across the pasture sometime after. The storm had just cleared, and there was smoke in the air, the smell of burning hair. No. There must have been a dozen head of cattle lying there, piled up, mangled. Strange scars across their back, Arthur. legs, and necks. He's it's not making like it easy. Was burned, and half like the skin was ripped off. <laughs> no, eyes bleeding. Some of them popped out. No, if I hadn't seen the storm, <laughs> I would have thought some devil caused that mischief. But no, sir, it was lightning. Electricity does something all right. I seen trees explode in front of me. I seen desert sand baked into glass. That's what I seen lightning do. But, you know, hey, this electricity professor's got a plan for you. Ah, oh, that must be of an entirely different kind. Oh. <laughs> He's whimpering. Arthur is sadistic, man. <laughs> I've seen lightning make entire herds of cattle explode. Blood coming out of their eye sockets, eyeballs popping. Oh, but the electricity the professor's gonna put you under, well, I don't know. I'm sure that's entirely different. <laughs> Arthur, he's enjoying himself way too much right now. The poor guy, hog tied to the back of the horse, whimpering. All he wants is his time in a court of law, but no, sir, no, not with Arthur here. No, we're gonna electrocute him for fun and for science. What? You're gonna pay, Mister. Okay, um They're getting away from us. Ah! We're gonna get Come on, let's go back. Crickets out of the blue. Uh, hey, gone. I'm sorry about that, McDaniels. You all right? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, me too. Well, you'll be happy to know we ain't got far to go. Hold on tight now. <laughs> He's sitting there whimpering. Goldie, are you okay? Wow. Inky would have handled that a lot better. He just bucked me right off. New horse. What do you get what can you do, right? I mean, Arthur had it coming. He did steal all of their moonshine. Don't mind me. Goddamn junkhead. That's good, girl. Easy, girl. You're okay. Poor horse. Let's brush. No, we can't brush him. Can we give him some food? Not when they're, we're in the middle of something. Let's brush him. Yeah, good girl. Or brush her. There we go. And how about some food? That was an ordeal. Good Poor little horse. <laughs> Oh, 
Red Bus says he didn't buck you. He almost died. Oh, did he absorb a lot of uh, gunshot there? Is that what happened? Man, those uh, those moonshiners really jumped me. Goldie died, Ox. You used horse reviver, says Von Reck. Your horse got shot five times before he fell. He didn't buck you off. I see. Sorry, Goldie. Not to mention Ox trying to do close combat with a sniper rifle. Yeah, I, I chose the wrong gun. I should probably make sure I have the right gun equipped. Well, I guess let's just use the Springfield rifle. And then uh, I didn't die because I used the Miracle Tonic, so we're good. Painful to watch, <laughs> says Shishevez Well, my friend, you must be new to the program. This well, entire program is painful to watch. The professor will be real pleased to meet you. <gasps> no! Here, ha, I got him. Over here. You're wonderful. Just, just wonderful. Come on. Don't be shy now. Let's go. Oh, this is going to be horrible. I'm going to do it, but I don't like this at all. <laughs> Here you go. Now, where's my money? Um, money? Yeah, for all the running around I've been doing. Oh, well, once they buy my humane electric ending facilitator, there'll be money enough for you, sir. Oh, that's not good enough. All right, let's get our, our, um... Our poor unfortunate, ready for the demonstration. Oh, do come and watch. It'll be amazing. Come along. All right. I mean, he's a murderer, and he's bad at animal husbandry. But does he really deserve what's about to happen? To board the train, ride your horse alongside it and hold L. Oh, that's something else completely, right? Yeah. I'm following this guy. Come on. Yeah. Ah, uh, can you get out of the way? I can't see the ghost. We hear the church bells chiming. That means a death is about to happen. We're going to an execution. Watch it, says random dude. Oh, after all of that, I'm not going to miss it. Arthur is sadistic, taunting him the, the entire time. At least he has on brown pants, says Tilly. Imagine if they were white. I mean, it's one thing to be electrocuted to death, but then to also brown your own pants? I mean, that's just inhumane. Come on, now. Get moving, will you? Hello. Here we go, we doing this? We're doing it right at the square. Town Square, public Hello. entertainment. Hey, mister, look out. Well, where's your chair, buddy?
You're, you're standing very close. What am I doing wrong? I followed him. Stop following it. It happens in a couple of days, says random dude. Really? I have to wait a couple of days now? Wait a day. All right. We could take a show. There are a couple of shows going on right now. I mean, I'd hate to start another storyline mission with... Move yourself. Please fire bottle him on the chair. Hello, sir. Says David. I don't know what that means. Sorry, is my horse in your way? Move yourself. Wait, well, going to have a big sale. let's go check out what Dutch wants from, uh, from us. You'll get a marker when it's time, says Steven. Okay. Well, then let's check in with Dutch. The one that got right in my way. That's right, we were going to uh, raid the mansion. Good job, girl. See, every time I hitch the horse, I get affinity with uh, with my horse. That's why I'm trying to hitch it whenever possible. All right, Dutch. Is it time? Angela Bronte. There Bronte. you are. You boys ready? Of course. What else do you know about this guy? Not much. Just these some slick little greasy-haired European clearly got power and money. Now, listen... If we go in there and start shooting up the place, boy's gonna get shot, that I guarantee. Better like this, we're gonna have a lot of protection. Ain't no one gonna get shot, Arthur, so everyone just relax. We'll charm them. Trust me. This is the place. Trust the Dutch? <coughs> Must be. You okay, John? I guess. Excuse me, sir. We have an appointment to see Mr. Bronte. Who are you? You get your boss down here and now so we can talk about this like gentlemen. No one's gonna get shot, Follow he says. Now, boy. I'm gonna charm them, he says. Was that the special Dutch charm I heard so much about? Relax. <laughs> I got this. Don't worry, boys. We come in peace. We just need to straighten a couple of things out with your boss. They're not taking any of my weapons. <laughs> they do. Oh, here's the guy. Chi sono sti buffoni? Why do you take his son? Excuse me. I said, why did you take his son? We ain't got no problems with you, sir. Nor you with us. But if you want to start one, there's going to be a lot of folks dead in this room before it's done. So, 
You walk into my city, stinking of shit and looking like this, and you come into my house before you have a bath, and you tell me how to act? You ask me to show compassion. Have I not shown you almost infinite compassion already by simply allowing you to breathe in my presence? Indeed you have. Now, we are simple country folk. All we have Don't sit in the chair. Other. And you have gone and you have took his son over some dispute with some inbred ex-slavers. It ain't got nothing to do with any one of us. You had nothing to do with destroying the liquor business. We was innocent bystanders. And that which we weren't innocent of, well, we... We most surely were ignorant of. You, you, you twist words. You lie shamelessly. You think you are better than everyone else. He's got him pegged. Teodoro. That's an embarrassing woman here. Angela uh, Brown. There we go. <laughs> Dutch Vanderlyn. Lucky Dutch there. Arthur Morgan. Uh, <laughs> the pleasure is mine. John Mars. <laughs> oh, oh, mine, <laughs> Take one. There you go. <laughs> Good so, job, Arthur. Uh, can my friend have his son? Of course, of course. <laughs> but uh, should I be out of pocket over a misunderstanding? Uh, of course, I know you would not want that, huh? Uh, no. No, no, no. So how about this? You perform a simple job for me. And you get your son back. Oh, we're working for the mob what is it? now. A couple of people have taken to grave robbing in the cemetery. Oh, that is a fine place for it. The best. <laughs> I love this guy. I love you. <laughs> See, they've taken not only to desecrating the dead, but they've done so without paying a tribute to the living. Thing is, they see my men. Of course, they run a mile. So maybe you two head off, huh? And you, Mr. Van der Linde. You tell me more about my manners. <laughs> Salute. Salute. Oh, this isn't good. We're working for the mob now. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. But I mean, we're getting rid of some grave robbers. You think he's taking us for a fool? No idea. What choice do we have? None. I guess. This is idiotic. You know where the cemetery is? I think so. Pretty sure I rode by it earlier. It's real impressive. You know, you did good holding your tongue in there. Do you trust one word that comes out of that bastard's mouth? We don't even know where Jack is. Listen, we found Bronte. We got in there. Dutch is with him now. All things considered, it could have gone a lot worse. That poor kid. I ain't been a good father to him. I hope... He's okay. He'll be fine. I figure... The Braithwaites were gonna hold Jack Ransom. For all the money we cost him. It must have sent him here so we couldn't get to him. But... Ronte knows by now there's no Braithwaite's left to pay him. Jack ain't much use to him anymore. Let's just get this done. Let Dutch handle the rest. I just hope you're right. <laughs> Jim Bob says you're an outlaw and you have a problem working with the mob. No, 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 no. You don't understand. It's not that the mob does crimes. I'm, I'm okay with that in this game. It's that when you start working for the mob... You don't stop working for the mob until you die, right? You're theirs. You suddenly belong to them. And that's my problem. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay. I think this is it. Keep it down. Let's hitch your horses up ahead. Ox, fill your dead eye now, says David. Thank you, David. You're probably right. I did just use my dead eye, didn't I? Oh, it's it's not that bad. It's not that bad. 
Do I really want to use all of my... Here, I'll, I'll take a cigar. I do have cigars. That just refills my core, though. It doesn't refill the outer bar of it. <sighs> I only have two of those left. Only three of those left. I have 10 of these. Antonio says, hey, Ox, my cat passed away recently. She was like a daughter to me, so I won't be staying this week. Please give your pets a scratch behind the ear for me. Will do, Antonio. Sorry to hear about your loss, but uh, I'm glad you were able to come to the program for a bit. This way. Come on. Let's find him and get the hell out of here. Search the cemetery for grave robbers. Okay. And keep it down. Don't want him to bolt on us. Josh says, Ox, stealthily take out the lamps. It will help you escape. Stay quiet. I don't want to spook him. Can't believe we're doing it. I know, but... He won't care once we get the boy back. That bastard better keep his word. Ooh. Hope Dutch is enjoying his brandy and cigars. Hey, did you hear that? Hey there, boy. Come on, let's keep on. <laughs> Is that John? When my time comes, Arthur, make sure they put me deep in the ground. With pleasure. This place gives me the chills. I'll go first. You stay close. Shush. Wait. Hey, wait a second. Hold on. Shh, shh, shh. Hey, hey. Shh. Stop. Shush. What the hell? What was that? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I had a bit to drink. My friend. Died. They can hear us, you know. They're still with us. Stealth never was your strong suit. You're the one walking around, John. Trying to draw us out. Can't 
can't see worth a damn. We sure picked the right night for it. Let's stay on them. Come on. I got their Memphis watch right here. Reckon this is gonna wake a few people up. No doubt. Come on, damn it! We're gonna lose them. Can hardly see what I'm shooting there. If it moves, blast it. Think of better ways to spend an evening. Next time Dutch can go and I'll have the drink. I think that's all of them. All right. Now let's find their stash. Gotta be around here someplace. Okay, but we'll need to be quick. We can't go back to Bronte empty-handed. Let's have a look where they first shot at us from. <sighs> Robin grave robbers. We've hit the big time. <laughs> well, they first started shooting at us down here. We can't go back to Rodney with nothing to show for it, Arthur. Think there might be something in here. <laughs> Got it. Good. Now let's get out of here. Shit, it's the law. Let's go, maybe we can get out that gate. Locked. Let's just track back to where we came in. Damn it. Come on. We best stick to the side. Am I following Stick him? With me. Yeah. Where are you taking us, John? Two guys to the right. What are you doing, John? On it. Well, it's lucky I ain't a religious man. Let's just get back there, collect our side of the deal. You all right? He best not be playing games with us. He almost certainly is. But let's just see. Keep your head. Act normal. How's he even gonna know we did what he asked? I got a feeling most things around here get back to him pretty fast. Like I said. Just see where we're at once we got Jack. All right, let's get this done. Whoa. Come on, Arthur. Okay. <clears throat> so we stopped the grave robbers, then the cops came after us. Are we bringing this uh, loot? Back to the mob? Is that what they wanted us to go there for? You coming in with me? Yeah, that's why I'm walking this way, John. Well, 
You took your time. Jack! Where's your host? Ah! Like I said, you took <laughs> your time. Ah! I'm glad to see you. Let's get going. What a fine man. Hey, friend. Uh, thank Mr. You. Bronte you all for right? everything. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Come on. You know, Arthur, Mr. Bronte has invited us to a garden party at the mayor's house. <laughs> And us, just simple country boys. Sounds like your scene there, Dutch. I don't really think uh, I want to do a garden party. Let's ah! go. We have a new camp set up, Jack. You're gonna love it. We got the kid. I'm so happy. All right, let's get this boy back to his mother. You sure you're okay, son? I'm fine. Papa Bronte said you'd come for me. I'm... I'm sorry. What for? For that. For taking so long. I had a fun time. I had my own room with a big bed and a toy box. And lots of books. Did they do anything to you? Have you ever had spaghetti? What? What's that? <laughs> it's food. It looks like worms, but it's delicious. Is that right? Papa Bronte teach me lots of Italian words. Don't call him that, please. You know, cavallo? That means horse. And fantafola? That's a slipper. A slipper? They gave me two pairs. One for day and one for night. Well, uh, I'm just glad you're all right. Poor John. Oh, yes. I had the best time. But I can't wait to see Mama. Did she miss me? She sure did. Like you wouldn't know. Wow, and John's sitting here listening to his own boy talk about what a great time he had with the kidnappers after John spent all this effort to try and get his own son back. And Jack's just having the time of his life. Never had spaghetti before, never had his own room, never had so many toys to play with. Would it have been better to just leave Jack there? Would he, had, would he have had a better life? Tilly says, been with the man a few weeks and already calling him Papa Bronte. I know, it's rough. <laughs> Poor John. Real good to see you, Jack. You too, Uncle Arthur. Did you catch the bad guys? Which ones? At the graveyard. Uncle Dutch and Papa Bronte told me. Just Mr. Bronte. Yeah. Me and your pa deal with him. Hey, they're back! I think I see Jack! Abigail! Abigail! We got you, your son, everything! We got him! Mama! He's fine! I'm fine, Mama. They fed me good. <laughs> Italian food. Aww. You ever eat that? Come here, you silly boy. Uh, you got him. You got my son back. Dutch, Arthur, thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, poor Abigail. Ah, oh, it's awful. I got my son back. Jack, I mean, it's so good Jack, that he's back. Jack. How are you, boy? I'm fine, thanks. Everything's okay now. Abigail? Can I go play now? Ah, so, well, we met Mr. Bronte. Hmm. He is, uh... Quite a character. Is he now? You ever meet an Italian strong man before? <laughs> Not outside of a circus. Well, let me tell you all about him. John, you go be with your family. Arthur, thank you. Boys, we got some work to do. Interesting work. But first, let's have a drink. Oh, no, Dutch. <laughs> I see <laughs> his eyes a gleaming. <laughs> well, the boys say, thank goodness. Thank you, Arthur. I... <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. Thank you. I understand. Come on. Do as Dutch says. <clears throat> Go be with your family. Dutch finds a mob boss and he sees opportunity. I have a feeling we're going to be working closely with them in the future. I got a silver. Encounter the dog and the drunk. Don't get spotted by the law. Complete with a 10 minutes and 40 seconds. Get four headshots. 
Party time, says Lucas. Looks that way. Un par de ojitos negros, cielito lindo de contrabando. Es el lunar que tiene cielito lindo junto a la boca. No se lo des a uh, Give the boy the book to complete the quest, says David. Great, thank you for reminding me. Lucas says, no, no, no. Mob bosses never share. That's true, but I have a feeling that Bronte doesn't consider Dutch to be a rival mob boss. I think he probably considers Dutch to be an errand boy. And Dutch sees Bronte as a way to get more power in St. Denis. Or at least more money. But I don't know, we'll see. Electrocution time! Well, uh, yeah, execution time, let's see. Um, where, ah, St. Denis. Uh, I don't see any, any quest markers popping up here, so it's not execution time. Instead, let's take a look at the camp, and I don't see any chores that we can do, though I can restock on ammunition and everything while I'm here. Let's walk around a bit. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's give this boy a bit of space. See you later. Good to have you back, Jackie. We missed you. Welcome back, Jack. Where'd he go? I want to give him the book I found. There he is. That's right, Jack, in your new clothes, play in the mud. Come on. <laughs> you must be starving, son. Let me get you something to eat. Thanks, Mama. The can gang I are celebrating. Of course you can. Yeah. Well done, John. The gang are celebrating the safe return of Jack and will be unavailable for other activities for a while. I'm very relieved. We all I can't give him the book. Thank God it worked out. Welcome back, Jack. Thanks, Uncle Hosea. Well, I'll let you find folks get reacquainted. Miss Grimshaw. You okay, Sadie? Sure. You boys did good. How you doing? Well, we got lucky this time. If you say so. <laughs> Mangoes. Hey, beer. Here we go. Paradise. An unspoiled paradise. Yeah, I hope so. Faith, Arthur. Have a little faith. I just want a beer. Why can't I get a beer? I don't understand it. I want a beer. Sure. Oh well. No beer for Arthur. Let's get some stew. Are there more camp upgrades? Great question. Let's check that out after I have my stew. Ah, there we go. This is a party. Come on. All right, all right. You boring bastard. But someone I never saw, he shot the rope. Now, let's see. There's a beer over here. Can I grab one of these? All right, Dutch, what do you got to say? I got away with nothing more than a sore neck. Nothing. He's just enjoying a cigar. Speaking of which, I should probably light a new one. Inspect. Ooh, a new letter. U.S. Army Discharge Certificate. This is to certify that... Wait a minute. We read this. Okay, so I guess it's just the same... 
the same letters just scattered around a new part of camp. All right, am I mad? Is there not a big drink symbol on my mini-map right here? There we go. Take a whiskey bottle. Oh, yeah, drink up. It's a party. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of whiskey. Sure, let's take one more. There we go. Down the hatch, feeling wibbly wobbly. That's the way you need to feel at a party. <laughs> Poor Kiernan, says Lucas. Yeah. Poor Sean. Never happened was only invented to make you feel something out of nothing. Makes no difference. Ain't sure nothing makes a difference. Jeez. <laughs> These girls have uh, some pretty intense drinking songs. Wow. <laughs> Let's head inside the house and see what's changed there. Uh, I would give you the book, Jack, but... Oh, he changed clothes quickly. He was in that Italian finery, and now, uh... So good to have you back. Thanks, Uncle Arthur. And to see a smile on your mama's face again. Good night, he says. I still can't give him. Okay. Guess so. See you later, then. Still can't give him the book. Well, let's see what the fellows have done to the place. I think I know what that'll be like. What's this? The castle in the field of lavender. Oh no, do we've got another penny dreadful? Oh no, I'm okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll just watch. Suit yourself, Dan. For what the hell it is. All right, A Romance of Old France by Miss Mrs. Hescott Childers, page 354. Forever be doomed to a tragic life of almost unimaginable suffering, even for a Frenchwoman. Mademoiselle La Comatesse swooned gallically. She swooned gallically? Well, like a, like a Celt? <laughs> she had seen her beloved Pierre with her own enigmatic, beautiful dark eyes, and yet now she knew instantly this German who was being sent off to die in Russia in a doomed attack on that frozen wasteland was none but Pierre himself. For the F-bomb ox, thanks, Chininator. That filthy Hun with the scar and the debonair look of enigmatic enigmas about him was Pierre. Enigmatic enigmas. The, the Duke of La Mochelle with an enigmatic dark hair and the elusive smile on his lips. Three enigmatics in two sentences. They have loved each other passionately since they were French children, playing with garlic and onions in a field of lavender while they did other French things <laughs> with remarkable enigmatic style and also a lot of shrugging. That's three, four, four enigmatics in one paragraph. They played with garlic and onions in a field of lavender, and then they did other French things while shrugging. Because that's what French people do. <laughs> oh my god, these books. Oh, how hard she'd been so foolish. Oh, had she, how she, had she been so foolish as to fall for the tricks of that deceitful aristocrat Aramis, the Duke of Paris. Yet now she was engaged to marry Aramis, while Pierre, her own enigmatic duke, was being sent to Russia to die in the snow or have his head chopped off. Would she swoon? Would she lie down and die? Would she submit to this awful Gallic oppression? No, for she was Mademoiselle La Camatisse, the bravest and truest French woman in all of France. France. She was so enigmatic. Slowly, she cleared her beautifully shaped and stylish throat. Is all that matters. All that throat was stylish and beautifully shaped. While the mistral wind blew her beautiful and stylish gown and her even more beautiful flowing dark hair enigmatically. 
She, with her noble striped and stylish gown and her enigmatic dark eyes. This person knows three descriptive words. She stood up from the stylish gallic seat in the beautiful lonely castle above the field of lavender enig enigmatically. Mademoiselle la Comtesse had got back her truest gift, even though she was a French woman, her own strength as a stylish but enigmatic person from the continent. She was a French woman, and no man could cage her unwillingly. Monsieur Aramis, Duke of Paris, a word with you before you leave, if you please, she gasped breathlessly, but bravely and very enigmatically. The ignoble Duke turned slowly. He stared sneakily and continentally at the most enigmatic and stylish of all enigmatic and stylish French women, the lady, the true dark-eyed beauty, he thought incorrectly. He was about to forever trick deceitfully into becoming his French wife and knew instantly run on sentence by the look of enigmatic rage and truth in her beautiful dark eyes that all of his French lies and continental deceits had not worked as they never could when faced by such a powerful French enigma. We, oui, mad mad mademoiselle, he gasped in French, continentally. That man we just sent to his death in Russia was not a murdering German at all. Was he your Parisian rogue? She demanded forthrightly, yet still enigmatically. She was strong and proud and almost for a moment English in her sense of truth, but still French and stylish and beautiful. Probably that throat. She felt the pride of her noble French, but good ancestors raise her up high and proud like a well-baked souffle in an oven in a farmhouse covered in wisteria, just as the awful Parisian duke before her seemed to shrivel up like a really badly cooked souffle could in an overstuffed palace run by greedy crooks who need their heads chopped off. Mademoiselle, you're sorely mistaken, he gargled gutturally. I think you're definitely mistaken, he added, unnecessarily revealing his idiocy. No, Monsieur le Duc, she said enigmatically. No, Monsieur le Duc, I shall never marry you or give you the keys to my castle, not while my love Pierre, the Duke of La Machelle, lives. Deny me, sir, that he lives. Look me in my dark, brooding eyes and tell me the truth. Pierre, he said desperately, and realizing that his weak Gallic ways had come to nothing when faced with the Gallic righteousness of the Mademoiselle. Zutalor, you are damn well right. Pierre the Duke of La Machelle is not dead. I lie because I have no real heart and because I am French. But soon he shall be for he is off to Russia to die in a terrible wintry war. I too am French, but I retain my integrity. Mes amis, arrest this man and off with his head. He is a man of nothing, she said proudly and almost like a Briton. Breton. Yet the terrible Duke of Paris, that sniveling embodiment of all things French, weak-backed and awful in a fight, would not do the honorable thing and kill himself, no matter how enigmatic were the looks given him powerfully by his nemesis, the Mademoiselle. Uh, random dude says, should I sleep or watch the stream ops? I'm sleepy. I do what you want. I'm just having a great time reading this enigmatic story about French I'm people. As tired as an old In cooler. fact, he was in a remarkable twist, prepared to even face arrest and shame rather than throw himself from the castle onto some noble French geology below. Unfortunately for this black-hearted continental bounder, the woman he faced also lacked a certain sense of Anglo-Saxon decorum. Wow. She pulled a long sword from a mounting upon the wall, and like a true French person, when faced with a crisis caused by the excess of a higher social order, chopped his head off. What can you expect? He was a black-hearted duke of a black-souled city, and I am a lady of the soil, she announced vicious, uh, victoriously. It's like my papa always said, when faced by an angry Parisian duke, chop his head off first and ask questions later, said her, trust, uh, her trusty maidservant, Marine knowingly. We must hurry for that regiment of doomed soldiers attempting to invade Russia in the midst of winter, which of course, as every historian knows, is the last thing you ever do, uh, is far ahead across the plains of Central Europe, said Mademoiselle la Comtesse suddenly and profoundly enigmatically, and then ran breathlessly through the castle and down the lavender-strewn spiral staircase. <sighs> After having crossed the drawbridge, she leapt urgently upon her noble charger, Marina, who was the color of a French horse. 
should, they should give us that option in the stables. We should have gold, brown, black, and French horse as our color options. Marina whinnied Frenchly and then raced fiercely across the windswept plains of Central Europe furiously. She hoped enigmatically that she could save the life of the one man that she loved and who loved her too. She would not be too late, she told herself. And Marina, pointlessly, Marina whinnied, uh, and the subtitles are covering the last line. <laughs> Again, something, I can't get it. Oh my God. Look, I, I'm sorry, but I just enjoy these little books way, way too much. They're so much fun. Oh, someone laid down while I was in the middle of that. That must have been a long story time because uh, everyone's asleep now and I'm no longer drunk. <laughs> oh, I like how they describe doing French things in a Frenchy manner. Okay, um, let's go upstairs and see if we can get some more ammunition. And then maybe we'll sleep through the storm in our brand new bed. Keith says, Harry French lady to the rescue. All right, I think this is my bedroom over here. All right. Nope, didn't mean to hop out the window. Lyle Morgan Larceny. So that's uh, like my pappy. All right, there's my fast travel. There's all my ammunition. We'll take that. Weird Man says, was fishing in the swamps down here in Louisiana and an air raid siren went off in the area. It kind of scared slash confused me. Turned out the local port uses sirens to tell workers it's lunch, so it's all good. Well, sorry for the fright, my friend, but I'm glad it ended up all right. Uh, okay, looks like that's all of the ammo I can take. And they put the fast travel marker really infuriatingly close to the ammo so that I can't take it without also doing a fast travel. There's gun oil there. Can I take it? I can't. Looks like I'm stocked up on gun oil. Um, well, let's, uh... Let's see if we can sleep. Bed. Sleep. Uh, until morning. Let's sleep until morning. Like a proud French would was the last line of the book, says uh, Mickey Jade. Thank you, Mickey. Okay, party's over. We can inspect in the daylight. So I can change my clothing and my trunk there. I've got my shaving kit over in the corner. There's my bed with some gun oil. This is all my ammunition, but looks like I'm stocked up. Mostly stocked up on it. Then, let's see, this is another letter. My dear Arthur, I hope this letter finds you well. I wanted to thank you for your help with Jamie. He and Daddy are still arguing, but I understand that Jamie is thinking about going back to college. Whatever happens, I believe you saved his life and we are all truly grateful. Oh, Arthur. I have made such a mess of my life, time and again. Why can I not change and be the woman I want to be? Why couldn't you change and be a man and put down all those fantasies that shroud your judgment? Life is very confusing, and I see now that I am not very good at it. I'm afraid we've got ourselves into another mess. It's not my fault. But I need your help. Uh-oh. I'm staying at the Hotel Grand in San Denis. Oh, Arthur. I know it is wrong to ask you. 
But I have nobody else. And for what we once had together, I beg of you, even though I am ashamed to do so. <clears throat> Yours, Mary. This woman. Arthur's ex, and she keeps coming back to him for favors. Second letter from Mary. Well, looks like we've got something waiting for us back in St. Denis. Ooh, he just keeps wanting to jump up out onto the roof there. Uh, I think we've read and looked at all of these photographs. And there's hair pomade there, so I think we're done with that. I, di I didn't want to go outside. I was wanting to inspect. Nope. And I can't get the dynamite. All right. Um. Can I give him his book now? Give request. Here, I hadn't forgotten about that storybook you lost. Thanks so much, Uncle Arthur. Do you want to have this? Same as we I found are. it near camp. Sure. Thanks, Jack. Well, see you then. <laughs> what was that? John just knocked me out of his bedroom and his son gave me a chocolate bar. <laughs> I guess it, I guess I had it coming. I did wake up the family to give Jack his book. He just pushes me out of the room. That's great. This must be Dutch's room. So glad Jack's back safe. Nice Camp stash. Great. Uh, let's take a look at the ledger. See what we can upgrade here. If anything. We can restock and both medicine and provisions. We can restock ammunition and lodging is actually already fully upgraded. We have a horse station, chicken coop, leather working camp boat, and that's it. So I've got all of my upgrades. Um, I suppose we should contribute to the camp ledger. So let's contribute. And what was I told? 20 bucks? There you go. 20 bucks. Looks like ammo and food is in the red. So maybe I should restock on both of those. Let's go to the ledger real quick. We're good on medicine, but let's restock ammo and food. Provisions, 40 bucks. That's in the white. And ammunition, 16 bucks. That's in the yellow. Why is that in the yellow? I just restocked it, though, didn't I? Hmm. Search drawer? Okay. Oh no, not another one. Oh, the American Inferno. Lord help me, I've got to. Oh God. <clears throat> oh, it started me at the very bottom. How do I, can I get to the top? Why did it start me at the very bottom? Uh, okay, The American Inferno by Evelyn Miller, Chapter 2, A Few Thoughts Upon New York. In the end, what has a man but his thoughts? I would postulate further. What is a man to stand for but his thoughts? His actions, perhaps? I know precious little of actions. Lions, donkeys, hyenas, they all act. So is that what we are? No, we are more and less than beasts. We are thoughts. We are actions and the reflections upon those actions. Yet we are also not merely reflections. We are mirrors. That is the preserve of spirits of the gods. We are actions and the thoughts upon actions, neither one or the other. We are free neither from action nor from thought. Our humanity can only be understood if we embrace both the animal and the god within us. As humans, we must nourish both. Yet America is a land of action, a place fixated not on ideas, but on the redemptive power of thought. Not on the redemptive power of thought, but on the obliteration of the intellect. 
All right, everyone is saying please later. All right, fine, fine, fine. <clears throat> I shall indulge in my passion for these the short novellas of Red Dead Redemption at a later time because the chat is getting restless. I get it. What's this note? Can I read this note? Inspect. And again, it starts me at the bottom. Molly's poem. Ooh, I bretch. Oh, this is Dutch's uh, main squeeze. I was a girl until your call commanded me to cross the sea. I've nothing left. I gave you all. We actually already read this, didn't we? Okay. Uh, now let's see. Mary Linton. So I've got Mary's quest in St. Denis, but I don't have the execution. It's not up yet. However, here in town, we've got three new quests for us, two main storyline quests, and then one from Leopold Strauss. Alan Pedersen with a tip for onions and garlic. Thank you for that. Um, Sparty says, there's just so much enigmatically a person can take in a single setting. <laughs> uh, you're right, you're right. Plus, that one was starting to sound a little bit dry. It was all about human nature and action and chance and all that. Right. <clears throat> it's at noon, says it's Jack tore me. Oh, how much time do I have? I've got 15 minutes. Is that enough time to get there to watch the execution? What's this? Bounty poster. Sebusca. Sebusca por asentiato y tracion punta agula nueva parisio. Javier Escuela. Vivo um, a thousand, a thousand dollars. Bounty for Javier. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, let's get out of here. Do Strauss's quest, I will, but I, I want to, I mean, the, the broadcast needs to wrap up here soon. I'm running out of time, so let's head back to St. Denis. And, um... Let's go, girl. Let's see if we can get there at around noon. Good here. Von Rex says, go get Leopold's quest and ride into town and watch yeah. the electrocution if available. All right. Is Leopold's quest going to send me back to town? All right. Let's do that. Oh, it's going to make me get off my horse. <clears throat> All right, Leopold. And he's going to be way at the back. There we go. I can run. Leopold Strauss, what have you got for me? Mr. Morgan. Still working, Mr. Strauss. What you been up to? Trying to wrap up our accounts before we leave, Mr. Morgan. So you'll be joining us in Tahiti? I uh, rather fancied Australia. A similar kind of people to us. <laughs> Lots of opportunity. That tells me we're going to be ranchers. Perhaps, but um, so far we have not raised many cattle. No. So, Mr. Morgan, will you help me finalize our business here? <laughs> This is filthy work. We'll need money in Australia. 
Uh, for cattle and feed, I mean. Why flinch now? You never have done before. I don't know. Well, here they are. Some fishermen by the name of Davison, Algy Davison, living in a place called Catfish Jackson near Scarlet Meadows. A fisherman. And that's it. We're a union built on that, you know. It, okay. <clears throat> well, it sounds like Arthur has had enough of this kind of work for good old Strauss, and I can't say that I blame him. Seek out the debtors and recover the money. All right, will do. And Mary, uh, Morelli Miwi says, need to prepare dinner soon. We'll still be here, though. Thank you, Morelli. I've got close oh, to 10 minutes drink. left. And I've got reason to go back to St. Denis. Laura says, please never butcher Espanol again, Ox. Watch long as I could, but gotta run now. Ta-ta, everyone. Ta-ta, Laura. Whoops, I, I took the wrong road. No, I, uh, yeah, I don't pronounce my Spanish right. <laughs> that's, that's accurate. Of course. Oh. Hey, you. Please. Gotta help me. What crazy animal attacked you? I got away, place. I got away, but they got my wife. Please, mister. I gotta do something. Okay. All right. Where is she? It's a sack out in the swamp by the water. <laughs> okay. Go on. See if you can find the law. I'll do what I can. Oh. Uh, I go about finding more help. Uh. Well, so much for the execution, guys. Help! Somebody help! What are you fighting with me for? Please find my wife! We gotta help this guy. I better take the road. for making a mess, lady. Would you please get them out of here? I can't stand to touch them. And I don't want them rotting indoors. All right. I'll take care of the bodies. You clean the blood. Where do I drop them? Do I give them to the gators? There you go. Just one more. Uh. 
Gator food. We're going to have some fat and happy gators here. Yeah. Nice and clean. There's some money I put away in the sack there. It ain't enough, but please take it. Okay. Sack there. Oh. Sure. Oh, thank you again. You my garden angel. Appreciate it. Pity bucks. Good luck to you. Okay, girl. My bonus bank robbery mission is available. Oh man, they're just throwing everything at me right now. Algy Davison. Uh, where, where do I go next? Ah. Uh. There's the horse fence. Algy Davison. Bank robbery mission, Charles. I have to go back to camp to do that. Coach robbery, Lenny. Well, the execution isn't available. Well, okay. So, I'll tell you what. I don't have time to do much for the rest of this stream. Let's get back to St. Denis. I'll log out. And the next week when we start up, maybe it'll be closer to noon and the execution will take place. We can watch that. Then do this mission for Algie Davison. Oh, Algy Davison, that's one of the debtors, right? Right. So that's a Leopold Strauss quest. So nothing else is popping up in town. Might be enough time to get the serial killer clue at the butcher. Easy to find. Maybe. Only have a few minutes left. Oh, traffic.
Monsieur Vamos, would you move, please? Best meets here. Caramba. Fresh sausage in the Okay, here we are at the butchers. See if we can find this clue. Can I help you? Hello there. Thank you. Really. Oh. There it is. Five bodies under the perfect star. Nosferatu. With summoning will become immortal again. Nosferatu. Wait, Nosferatu was the name of the vampire in that one film. That wasn't based on like uh, vampire lore, was it? Nosferatu with Dominica Will become immortal again. Five bones under the perfect star. Nosferatu with Dominica Will become mortal again. Hmm. Right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I'm going to do a hard save. And with that, I will see you all um, this weekend. I've got two, two new lore videos for the weekend on Far Harbor. And uh, my next live stream is going to be Monday. I haven't figured out what I want to do for Monday yet, but I'll figure it out and we'll have something planned. Then we've got Alien Isolation for Scotch and Smoke Rings on Thursday. And we'll pick up right here where we leave off in Red Dead Redemption 2 on Friday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. So can't wait to, to see each and every one of you then. But have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Uh, get some healthy food and, and good sleep. And I'll see you over the weekend with some Far Harbor videos. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.